We get together here to join up these two innocents in the traces of wedded bliss. <clears throat> now, uh, who gives this here child to be married to this man? Me, naturally. You got the ring. Oh, right here. Now, uh, do you, uh... A bird. Take this here child, uh... Lorraine. Uh, Lorraine. To be your lawful wedded. Amen. I mean, I do. And, uh, do you, Lorraine, take Bert's here likewise? I do. Uh, the ring. We're stuck. Excuse me a minute. You idiot. We're idiot. stuck, Mr. Wishbone. Oh! Mm. Mushy, you're the best man. Go ahead, boy. Set her in place. I here now pronounce you hitched. All right, Bert. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give her away. That means I'm the first. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wishbone. And we certainly can't forget our best man. Thank you, Mushy. Well, go get it. The <laughs> what? The cake. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wishbone. <laughs> Oh, here now. You're staying to eat, and I won't take anything but yes for an answer. Well, thank you, friend, but I gotta get going. Though on second thought, I think I can spare the time for a bite or two. You know, riding circuit don't exactly fill a body out. No. Here now. No, you don't. Now, you may be married, but you're not leaving here until you've been sent off proper. Mushy! Oh, You never bake anything like that for us, Wishbone. Toothless, if you can find a woman that's fool enough to say I do, I'll bake you cakes so big that you'll have to climb it to cut it. <laughs> Get off my way. Now, honey, a ship isn't launched without a christening, and a marriage is named right without a cake cutting, so let's get to cutting. Come on, Bert. Your bride's gonna need some help here. Just what's going on here? Uh, well, you see, Senor Wishbone, he... Uh, uh, what I mean is... Uh, we just thought we'd have a little party. A party? What for? Uh, you better ask Senor Wishbone. I'll take you your horse. Nice to have you back. We was getting kind of worried about you. Wishbone. Well, now, we wanted to wait for you, but the preacher was in a hurry, and well, we didn't know when you'd get back. Wishbone, there's dry country ahead. This herd is trail-weary, about ready to break any time. Mr. Favor's up in Denver, and... Preacher? Uh, yeah, this is a wedding celebration, complete with a brand-new bridegroom. Look here. Look who's the bridegroom. Come on, honey, come on. I'm afraid this is all my fault, Rowdy. 
We was going to wait no, until... No, if it's anybody's fault, it's mine. I'm Lorraine Harvey, Mr. Um... Now, Lorraine, this is Rowdy Yates. He's the man who agreed to take me and my 40 head up to Bighorn Basin. Oh, I can't tell you how grateful we are, Mr. Yates. Oh, well, uh, 40 head uh, don't complicate things too much in a herd this size. But, uh... But, um, a honeymoon might, huh? Yeah, you see, uh, uh, we're going to pull out of here as soon as Quince gets back, and uh, women don't go with trail drives, honeymoon or no. We know that, Rowdy. There's a wagon train over at the fort, and Lorraine's going to ride up to Bighorn with them. You see, I was supposed to wait until Bert brought the herd up to the basin to get married, but, well, I met the parson, and uh, I sort of talked him into coming down here, and, well, Cupid and Mr. Wishbone did the rest. Yeah, that figures. Uh, well, never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Right. That's what I always say. Is that what you always say? So don't you worry, Mr. Yates. I'll be gone first thing in the morning. Uh, well, what's everybody standing around like it's a funeral for? This is an old-timey celebration. Congratulations, Bert. Uh, must he dish up some of those wedding fiddles for Rowdy? Hey! Let's get some music going here! <laughs> heard what Mr. Yates said. This is supposed to be a celebration. I don't know, Lorraine. I think maybe we should have waited. What for, Bert? We're in love. That's all that matters. This ain't my dance. I'm making it mine. <laughs> I hope so, Lorraine. I hope so. Nice ride? Well, I sure had better. How's it look? Well, just like always. Out of you're in trouble. Yeah, well, looks like the last three days in the basin are gonna be long ones. Well, the only thing is, you ain't going to Bighorn. You talking about that's the way Mr. Favor and I laid it out before he left? Did he uh, lay out the Cheyenne, too? Rowdy, I, I had a talk with the lieutenant at the fort. They've had six fights in the past ten days. The whole South Trail is just covered with our little red brothers. How do we get through? Well, the boys in blue claim we got to swing due north. North? Ah, that means we lose three or four days if we go that way. Well, might save your hair. What about water north? That's yeah, not good. But there's a creek on southeast of here, a few miles ahead. Could follow it for about two days. That is, if there's water in it. Yeah, if there ain't. If there ain't, it's gonna get mighty thirsty. Come on, Marcia, get going. We haven't got all day. Well, yes, sir. Of all the ten-fingered, bird-brained, ox-tote, Mercy, pick that stuff up! <laughs> oh, Bert, I know I promised, but the thought of leaving you... It won't be for long. Just four days at the most. Then we'll be together again. On our own land. On our own land. Sounds like something at the end of a rainbow. It looks like it, too. Blue mountains and green grass. The prettiest little valley you ever saw. It's like a new world, Lorraine. It's a place where there's just today and tomorrow. And no yesterdays. There aren't any yesterdays for us, Bert. Our world started when you put this ring on my finger. Bert, there's been a little change of plan. We're going to be heading north. That'll leave you about 40, 50 miles from the basin when we get to the river. Well, once we get there, I guess I'll just drift my cows back on down the river. By yourself? I got no choice. Well, I want you to know, 
What about you, ma'am? Are you about ready to pull out? Yes, I'm due at the fort by noon. The uh, wagon master gave me till then before we started north. I wouldn't rush it, ma'am. The wagon train ain't going no place. Army's got the trail closed off. Cheyenne? Yeah, that's, uh, that's why we're changing and going north. Well, I'm going to need a little help cutting my 40 head out of the herd. Oh, they can go along with us, and you can take them from the river. I can't leave my wife here alone. There's someone she can stay with? No one. I'll start cutting out my beef. Well, wait a minute, Bert. You said you had to sell out, and you got everything you own in this here wagon. What are you going to do with the cattle? I'm not going to leave my wife here alone. It's all right. We'll manage. Sure we will. Thanks anyway, Rowdy. All right. All right, she can go along with us as far as the river, then you're on your own. But stay close to Wishbone, will you? Well, what are you looking at? I'm moving, I'm moving. When are you going to learn to make a decent cup of coffee? I didn't know it was going to turn out like this, Roddy. If I'd known she was going to... Wishbone, I want this wagon moving. Now. You know, he's not really as tough as he makes out to be. Mm-hmm. But like he said, get these wagons moving. That tailgate up. You got everything nailed down that rattles? Yes, sir. All right, you better get back with the herd and we'll take care of the missus. All right, thanks, Wish. Take a look here. All right. So you just stick close to me and everything will be all right. All right. Wish. Everything's going to be just wonderful. You didn't need to overdo it. Try it then. At least till we get there. Hey, you know, a 44 comes in kind of handy on the trail. I don't use them. Suit yourself. You'll be riding drag, and uh, we got about 800 head of broken S cattle we had about a week ago. They're still not quite settled yet. It's Cliff Stanton's brand. That's right. Stanton's the kind of a man who expects us to handle his cattle real special. He's a man that expects too much. Sounds like you know Stan. I know him. All right, hit him up! Two-thirds a day chasing that son of Satan. Well, Stanton's, isn't he? 
Yeah, he just plain don't want to leave home. Well, keep an eye on him. He takes all his love to take half the herd with him. Oh, that's no good lop-eared tick. Brody, you better pass the word and take it easy on that water. I just had a good look at that bed ground I was figuring on for tonight. There's water there, ain't there? Yeah, some, but there sure ain't enough to water the whole herd out. From now on out, it gets worse. Did you tell the rest of them in that? Nope. I figured that was your job. Be a little short of water tonight, so we're gonna hold them up and send the cattle in 20 at a time. So, uh, double up the night guard, will you? We double up the night guard. We start putting those critters through 20 head at a time, we're gonna all be working all night. We'll all be working all night. Start holding them back! Don't let them get to water all at once! <laughs> How come the good Lord only gave you this oak to burn? It's all fired hard to cut. So you can work up an appetite. By the time I'm through cutting, I'm too tired to eat. Well, maybe that's the way the good Lord intended it. So the trail boss could save on his expenses. When I was young, I used to wait on my old master and hand his plate and pass the bottle when he got dry and brush away the blue tail fly. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. You know, she makes it sound like she really likes scrubbing clothes. Well, that's them wedding bells, Jim. Makes the world sit up on his beam end. Everything seemed like rainbows and fiddle music, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever think about taking that long, big step? Me? Oh, uh, yeah, it, uh, it crossed my mind once or twice. How about you? Well, uh, you won't say anything. No, no, I'll take it to my grave. Well, uh, it happened up in Ellsworth, though. Three, four years back, I, I even got the ring. Paid 45 good, hard-earned iron men for it, too. And I got right up to the church, and that's when it happened. Yeah, what happened? Well, I, I tried to go one way, and, and my boots went the other. I fought them. I fought them real good, but, uh, well, they just took off with me in them. And I'll tell you, there's times when I can still hear this old yellow squalling. My master's gone away. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. Oh, wow, Mr. Stanton. You're about the last person I expected to see out here. Well, I... Didn't think anyone would follow me this far. Not even you. After what you've done to me, I'd follow you no matter how far. Just what did I do? Chasing off after a man like you were afraid to face decent people. Bert and I are married. Sure. That's right, married. It still doesn't make any difference you're going home. I am home. I'm with my husband. Mind telling me what this is about? I'll tell you what it's all about. She's run off from home. She's my daughter. I'm sorry, Mr. Yates. I didn't think you had to know about any of this. I was your daughter, Papa, but now I'm Bert's wife. Not to me, you aren't. I won't have a daughter that's married to a man of that kind. 
Cliff, it's over and done with. Maybe you best forget about it. No, it's not over and done with. Not as long as there's a breath of air left in me. I'm leaving tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock. And you're going with me. Oh? How, Papa? At the end of a rope? Because that's the only way you're going to get me home. That's up to you, young lady. One end of the rope or the other, you're going home. This isn't your brigade, Stanton. Lorraine isn't any backwoods soldier. She's my wife. As long as she wants to keep it that way, that's the way it's going to stay. For a man with a yellow streak down his back a yard wide, them is mighty big words. Why don't you get behind her? It's safer for you that way, Mr. Coward. She stays, Stanton. You're wrong, Mr. Coward. I'm taking her back. Unless you want to strap on a gun and try and stop me. Like there's going to be no gunplay around here. There's a cattle drive, not a private battlefield. Where's Favor? He's up in Denver. Well, then you're in charge. I want him off of this cattle drive, and I want him off now. Look, Stanton, you may own 800 head, but you ain't running this drive. Now, Harvey signed on to go up to Bighorn, and that's where he's going. Now, you listen to me, Yates. You listen to me, Stanton. As far as I'm concerned, your daughter's legally married. Now, if you want to do something about that, you can either in a courthouse or behind a badge, you wait till you get to Bighorn. After the drive. Cliff, there's nothing you can do. Maybe, maybe not. Any objections if we ride along to Bighorn with you? No, there's no objections. You got that right. Just don't start any trouble that I'm going to have to finish, understand? <laughs> Known Cliff Stanton for 20 years. Once he makes up his mind, he never changes it. Miss Lorraine, I'm sorry. Reb, I'm not going back. You could tell him that for me. All right, Bird, get back there, Bird. Well, what I said about the trouble, that goes for both of you. Well, if there's any trouble, Rowdy, you'll have to start it. your breath, Rep. She's married, Cliff. You can't do anything about that. I can make her a widow. Oh, fine looking animal. Yeah, he should be. I raised him myself. <laughs> Right, we took his first step for him. That's a little important, that first step. Almost as important as the second one, the one he takes on his own. That would depend upon uh, which direction that step takes him. I guess that'd be up to him, wouldn't it? You know, I might agree with you, Rowdy, except that uh, Cliff Stanton's a real single-minded person, and Miss Lorraine is the only thing he's got left. So it's just natural he'd want it to go his way. Rather than Bert Harvey's. Why? What's it got against him? When the war broke out, Cliff Stanton took a commission. He formed a brigade from our county, and Bert and his kid brother rode along with us. Did real fine, too, until we tried to take a hill at Gettysburg. We got through the artillery all right, and about halfway up the hill. But Bert's kid brother got killed. Something must have busted in Bert. Anyway, he ran. He ran clean out of the war. That wasn't enough, he came on back home. He tried to live with us, with what he'd done. Yeah, I could see that it'd take a little doing. Yeah. He took an awful beating, but he never fought back, leastways not with a gun. Miss Lorraine was the only one that stood up for him. Well, it's like I said. Cliff Stanton's a real single-minded person. Yeah, well, so am I, especially when this herd's concerned. Owner or no owner, if Stanton gives me any trouble, he's going to have to answer to the law. That's fine, Riley. Except then, it might be too late. Sure gives a man the crawlies. I know what you mean. He'll be steering that herd ready to run. That old bunch quitter I was telling you about, he's been on his feet all night just looking for a chance to run. Well, if he makes it, you better let him go. He 
gets caught up there in those brakes, we'll have a hard time chasing him out. There he goes. Keep an eye on the rest of on my head. The herd. I got the rest of the crew and try to turn them. Gotta head them in. your brand. Twenty head short, near as I can make it. Twenty head of mine. Well, that's too surprising. I mean, you got more cattle in the herd than anyone else. I want to know what you're going to do about it. Any sign? Headed back in those breaks. Take two or three days to get them out of there. Well, there's your answer. We can't spend two days around here without water. And I'm out twenty head of prime beef. Is that it? That isn't a bad percentage, Stan. Twenty out of eight hundred. You know, on a trail drive, there's a risk. I'm willing to take a risk any time, but I'm not going to stand by for a deliberate planned loss. You want to say that plainer? Yes, Mr. Coward, I'll say it plainer. If those had been your cattle, they'd never have gotten away, and that run would have never started. You wait a minute. I was with him when it happened. You got any reason for thinking somebody would purposely drive off 20 head of your cattle? When a man acts like a coyote, he starts to think like one. Be easy to double back and pick up that beef, wouldn't it, Mr. Coward? Bert, you don't have to take that from him just because he's my father. Don't turn your back because of me. It might be I'm not doing it for you. Harvey on flank. I did. He just didn't show up. He'll do what he's told or he'll get off this drive. Where's your husband? Well, I thought he was with the cattle. He's supposed to be, but I haven't seen him lately. Well, he went out early this morning, and when he didn't come back, I thought maybe you were still having trouble and you needed the extra help. Why? Is something wrong? No, that's all right. Harvey seems to be missing. You know anything about it? Didn't take him long to show his stripe, did he? I didn't do anything to him. I didn't even have to.
take two hours and relieve the other half of the crew. He'll take two. Yates, how long do you expect to keep up this pace? Till we get to Waters, Tim. If he walked out on you a year from now? He didn't walk out. He'll be back. Lorraine, I've lived a lot of years. I've done a lot of things. Some good and some bad. But always the meaning was in the right place where you were concerned. You believe that, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. And believe this. When your mother died, I promised her that you'd get better than you gave. Now, you're not going to get that with half a man. Father, you don't understand. It doesn't matter what Bert was or is. He's my husband. But Lorraine, he's no good. How can you say that? I know if a man runs once when the going isn't easy, he'll do it again. Maybe next time it'll be you instead of his brother that stays behind. Then that'll be my problem and not yours, Father. You know, when I married Bert, I knew you'd come after me. I knew just what it would be like. And you know what I dreaded the most? I dreaded the day that you would push Bert too far because then we'd both find out what can happen to a man who just... who just can't run anymore. Now what? Well, it looks like somebody's trying to join up with us. I could only find 16 heads, Stanton. The cows are so important to you, I'll give you four of my own. What you say about the color of the stripe down his back? Grandstand plays don't make a man. And neither does pushing a few head of cattle. I didn't see you pushing them in. Forget it, Cliff. He's earned his chance. There hasn't been a chance for him, not for eight years. You don't know that. Not for sure. That's just it, Reb. Not knowing for sure. That's why I've got to spill a yell out of him so much that there won't be any doubt. Not for any of us. Cupid behind every tree. The ink still wet on my license, and I have to go looking for my husband. I'm sorry, Lorraine. And I had some thinking to do. Anything that two heads can't solve quicker than one? Not when there's no solution. 
Oh, Bert. Father doesn't make that much difference. Not if we don't let him. It's not him, Lorraine. It's me. Six white horses, a golden coach, and a 50-acre garden of Eden. <laughs> Big Horn is just a valley, Lorraine. A valley with water and grass and not much else. Maybe I made too much of it. Maybe we should have waited until you knew what you were getting into. You mean father is right? You know, you had me worried there for a minute. But Lorraine... Bert, it doesn't matter what's waiting for us in your valley. What matters is what we bring to it. You and I. And you know something? We've got our dream if we just open our eyes wide enough to see it. This is it. You and I together, this is our Garden of Eden. And nothing's ever going to change that. Not ever. You were right. Two heads can solve a problem faster than one. It comes in bunches. There ain't nothing that creek to water ten head, let alone three thousand. Beyond that? Well, the next three creeks are bone dry. Well, I guess that don't leave us much choice but to head north to Alkali Sink, does it? Well, there's two. Let's head north and hope. Well, I better go tell the men. Can't put it any plainer than that. It's gonna get worse before it gets any better. We're gonna have to spend maybe three days and nights in the saddle. Well, a drive this long without water has been made before. We'll do it again. Heading north takes me further away from Bighorn. I might get you closer to water, though. Yeah, when we get to Alkali Sink, if there's water there, I'll spare a few of the men, help you take your cattle where you're going. And if there isn't any water at Alkali Sink? Well, no other choice. We're just gonna have to keep moving north. Well, I'll have to leave you there, then. Quitting, Harvey? I promised my wife a home and a ranch on the Bighorn Basin. I intend to see that she gets it. Is that what you want? Stranded a hundred miles from where you're going with 40 head of cows? Jim, how are you feeling? Tell you right, I feel like I've been to an all-night dance and everybody stepped on my toes. Yeah, well, a little saddle time will be just right for you then. Uh, gotta find some water. Well, that's what I'm paid for. Wish you were much you get up to that spring. Fill everything you can find full of water. So we'll have enough for the horses. Anything else? Yeah, maybe if you know a prairie. Get started, Mushy. You want to talk about it? Sort of talk about it. Well, maybe you can fool some of them, but you can't fool me. There isn't any water up at Alkali Sink. You get some sort of a crystal ball or something? Well, I don't need a crystal ball. I've been on these drives long enough. I can feel bad trouble. Well, what do you want me to do? Just quit and let the cattle drop right here? Well, no. Just keep doing what you're doing. But sometimes it helps to talk about it.
There's no other way, Roddy. Men had to have rest. Yeah, what good's it gonna do? No word from Quince. No idea how much further we have to go like this. Alkali Sink, see it right up ahead. All right. You're gonna find out in a little bit anyway. There ain't no water in Alkali Sink. Why did you have to lie about it? You said there was water there. I didn't say there was water there. I said if there isn't water there, we're gonna cut straight through north. Quince is out there looking for a trail right now. Now get back in the saddles, everyone. I want this herd moving. You know, heading north takes me that much further away from Bighorn. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that, Bert. Well, I guess I won't be any closer to where I'm going than I am right now. I hate to ask it, but I could use a little help to cut my 40 head out of the herd. You gotta take 40 head across this country alone? He can try. We can both try. What are you trying to prove, Harvey? I ain't trying to prove anything, Stanton. Those 40 head and that bit of grass down at Bighorn are all Lorraine and I have. Man's got no choice. He plays the hand that's dealt him. All right, Harvey. You win. I've got $5,000 cash here. It's all yours. Take it, get on your horse and start riding. Don't stop. You can have a lot of good times on $5,000. Alone. You had your say, Stanton. I've had it. Now start running. You had to do that, didn't you, Father? You had to find a way to push me out of your life. Lorraine! Lorraine! Use that again, Cliff. You're gonna have to use it on me first. Back, Stanton, and you called him a coward? There was nothing else I could do. I had a reason. Maybe Bert had a reason at Gettysburg, too. But nobody took the time to ask him. I did. And I got my answer, but that just wasn't good enough for you, was it, Father? You couldn't just let us be. Bert, tell him, please. Let's get this over with. Is it that important to you? Not to me. To you. All right. All right, Stanton. I had a reason. I killed my brother. We were halfway up the hill, at least those of us that got through the artillery. I fired and then I, I ducked behind this wall to reload. There was a yell. I shot before I really saw anything. He didn't say anything, he just looked at me and he died. I put my rifle down. I turned back. Because I couldn't kill again. Not for flag or country or not even for what you call honor. That's the way it was and that's the way it is. All right, Stanton, we got a herd to move. Not gonna leave him there, are you? The way you want it, isn't it? The wish holder. Uh, there might not be any need for you. You mean he's dead? No, he ain't dead. Far from it. Yeah. Let me have a look. Uh, no, it's not too bad. Grab some whiskey in my saddlebag. Get it, will you? You're just too darn stubborn to get out of the way of a prairie fire, aren't you? But he's just stubborn enough to make a darn good cattleman. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Lorraine. I only wanted you to have the best. I guess you had it all the time, and I didn't realize it. Here, yeah. go smart a little bit. 
here. I just hold that on there. And don't tell me you two are going to drive that herd to Bighorn by yourself, because Reb and me are throwing in with you just as soon as we get to water. Mr. Rowdy, you had me scared there for a minute. I thought you were just going to leave him. I knew he wouldn't all along. Oh, yeah? What made you so sure? Because like I told Mushy, you're not near as tough as you like to be. Yeah, well, tough enough to move these cows out, and you better be, too. I think this is some sort of a picnic. Get moving. On a trail drive, a man can find the things he wants. A sense of God's good earth, the room to move in, a job to be done. Of course, there's not always enough water, and you can't always choose your own company. There's some that say that's all that's wrong with hell. It's up to me to handle good and bad. I'm Gil Favor, trail boss. That's him. He sure is a lonely sounding cuss. Yeah, he's gonna be a lot lonelier. Come on, let's flush him out. Did I see what I thought I saw? You must have. I'm seeing it too. Indians don't have things like that. What do you figure? Whoever firing them off ain't doing it for a celebration, not out here in the middle of nowhere. Maybe somebody's in trouble. Let's see. Stay away from me, mister. I'll light it. Nothing to be afraid of, boy. We're just a couple of drovers. Where's your cattle? They're bedded down back there. We're looking for a coyote. Did you hear one a while back? I guess you scared him away, huh? That's what I meant to do. No, I mean it, mister. I'll light it. You're the one who'll get hurt. Not if I throw it, I won't. You uh, run away from home? Asking questions to strangers around here, mister, I'll just get you into trouble. He says his grandfather used to make fireworks. Maybe we'd best let him tell it. What are you doing out there all alone, baby? Where are your folks? It was Indians. Indians? They, they killed my father and my grandfather, and they carried off my mother. Well, uh, how did you get away? I was hiding in the barn. The Indians took our horses and set fire to the barn, but they didn't wait to see it burn all the way. That's how I got out. You 
Been alone for long? Uh, happened a week ago, Mr. Favor. He's trying to get to his uncle in Eberly. Where do you come from, Davy? West Fork, Mr. Favor. But that's only two days back. You said a week ago. Well, it was his pony, boss. He couldn't leave without finding his pony. It took me a long time to find him, Mr. Favor. Lucky he scares so easy, or the Indians would have got him, too. Well, that's enough questions for tonight. The poor little lad's all tuckered out. Now, here's some warm soup for you, Davy. We'd go right by Everly, Mr. Favor. Now, Pete, even if we didn't, we sure wouldn't leave them all alone out here in the middle of the prairie. Oh, go ahead and drink it. We phone wouldn't give you anything that would hurt you. Well, I never thought I'd live to see the day that you'd admit it, Pete Nolan. It tastes real good. I guess I'm just not very hungry. Oh. Well, I'll bet your horse is. I'll take him out and give him some graze at the remuda. Well, couldn't he, I mean, couldn't you let him stay with me? Sure we could, Davy. It's a right smart looking little pony. But you better be getting some sleep. Come on. Oh, uh, you can use my bedroll. Now, nothing of the kind. There's a place for him in my wagon. Well, I'd kind of like to sleep like I've heard trail drovers do. On the ground with your head on a saddle. Oh, well, sure. Uh, tell you what, suppose I tie up your pony to my wagon and, and you bed down next to Pete. Yeah, and get his saddle, huh? Oh, hurry up, loose in those seats. I got it. Now, he told me to take it in. Here you are, Pete. Get out of my way. Gives you that smile like that, you expect him to bust out crying. But you got to remember what he says he's been through, losing his whole family like that. Uh, Davy, you want to feed these to your pony yourself? Oh no, thanks. You do it. Thanks a million times from Jonathan and me. Sure, there isn't anything we can do to help, boss. Just give him time. Can you imagine him setting off across the prairie alone? He ain't got no one but that one uncle in this whole world. Mr. Favor? Hey. You go to sleep now. We can talk in the morning. Well, he ought to have a bite to eat first. Now, nobody can sleep good on an empty stomach. Here you are, Davy. Well, thank you, Mr. Wishbone. Now, eat it. Don't play with it. Mr. Favor? I've been thinking. On a trail drive, a man has to pull his own weight. That's right, Davy. Well, maybe you could find something for me to do that'd be useful to you. I'll sure find something. After all the suffering he's been through, to be thinking of somebody else. Well, now, that's something. A fine lad, Mr. Faber. And it just might be he's got a fine imagination. Well, now, that's no thing to say. Well, look at him. Poor little tyke is too miserable even to eat. Come 
Well, now, that's a mighty fine thing to do, boy. You learn the manners of the trail real quick. Oh, it's nothing, Mr. Wishbone. I always dry... I used to dry dishes for Ma. Well, it's a mighty fine thing to do anyway. And I done something for you. Yes, sir. There you are. Cut them right down to your size myself. Oh, thanks, Mr. Wishbone. My grandpa and Ma and Pa would have liked to see me in them, but, well, now that they're gone, I guess I'd better not be happy about anything. Oh, well, you keep them and wear them when you feel like. You look like a real drover in them shops, Davy. Would you like to play with us, Davy? Uh, I don't think so, Mr. Quince. Thanks anyway, though. We don't have to play for money, boy. Look here, Davy. Uh, oh, Mr. Rowdy! He's all mine? He ain't no one else's. A little old frog to do what 25 grown men couldn't. Yeah. You know, it just don't seem right. The good Lord sending big troubles on a little kid. Well, I guess he ain't got to you like he has the rest of us. Oh, he gets to me all right. But I was just wondering why we hadn't heard about any Indians in the neighborhood. Well, there's a lot of things we don't hear about. <laughs> You'll have to haul to break him, Davy. <laughs> Now, here, Davy, you're going to need a cowboy hat. That's the smallest we got. Yes, sir. Well, there's a newspaper I've been saving ever since San Antonio. Get it. All right, it just goes to show you, never want to throw anything away. Don't ordinarily hire on a hand with a head quite as little as yours. Well, now, that's something like. Davy? <laughs> I feel just like a real... I feel just like a real drover. Uh, except that I don't have a lasso and rope. Oh? You know how to use a rope? Oh, yes, sir. I think. Pete, see that he gets a rope. Right. Right. Oh, Mr. Faber? Thanks a lot. For what, Davy? No, for just being you. You're welcome for that, Davy. Soon you'll be ready to hire on as a drover. Oh, thank you, Mr. Favor. Thanks. Too bad we reach Everly tomorrow, though. It doesn't give you much more chance to practice. You worrying about your uncle? Yes, sir. Pete and I could ride in first, tell him what happened. Oh, thank you, sir. I guess I'd just as soon not ride in with you. Any other reason you don't want to ride in with us? Well, it'll be so bad on him. Finding out about, well, it's his whole family. By the way, you never did tell us your family name, Davy. 
It's Colby, Mr. Favor. That's her name, Colby. Colby, huh? It was Indians. That's what you said. Wasn't it, Davy? Uh, yes, sir. Indians. I think you'd better ride in with us after all tomorrow, Davy. Yes, sir. Jameson. Thank you, Sheriff. Morning, Sheriff. Hey, Drovers? We look like it or smell like it? Both. <laughs> no offense. Hey, the boy back there, the junior kind of drover? I was wondering if you could tell us where a family named Colby lives. Colby? No Colby and Eberly, not that I know of. And I know everybody. There's a Colby here, you just don't know it. I don't. This town's never had more than 165 souls in it, none of them named Colby. You're uh, sure? I've been sheriff here for six years. I don't care how long you've been sheriff. There's got to be a Colby here. It's this boy's uncle. I don't care whose uncle he is. Colby ain't an everyday name. If there's somebody here named Colby, I'd know it. Well, Davy comes from West Fork. Maybe you've heard of the Colbys over there. No. Attacked by Indians a couple of weeks back. Indians? If there'd be any Indians within 100 miles of Eberly, I'd know it. Everybody in town would know it. Oh, don't take it so hard, Pete. Some kids just find it easier to lie than tell the truth. Shall we be getting back, Davy? This is? No, sir. It's a tree. This isn't a hickory branch, but it'll do. You want to whop me, Mr. Favor? I want the truth, Davy. But I told you the truth. About your uncle? Well, no. About the Indians? Well, Davy, what about the Indians? There wasn't no Indians. You made up that whole story? Well, we do live near West Fork, and my grandfather does make fireworks, and... And you did run away from home. Well, I had to. I have to find my pa. Where'd you expect to find your father, Davy? Somewhere north in the Sedalia Trail. He's a bounty hunter. A bounty hunter? Well, what's wrong with that? There ain't enough lawmen around here, and somebody's got to do the dirty work. My pa's the best man there is. He makes a living for Ma and me catching men who've done wrong. So what's so bad about that? Davy, north on the Sedalia Trail is from Texas to Missouri. You expected to find your father by going along with us? Now you can dream up something better than that. Well, my mom wants me to find him. She gave me a message about the man he's after. Davy, no mother sends a boy your age alone into the dry plains. She must be sick with worry, eating her heart out right now, wondering where you are. Now, are you going to tell me the truth? Or are you going to make me use this? I can't tell you. It's private. Oh, take him home to his mother. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want any part of it. Uh -huh. It's your responsibility. Well, why me? 
You found him. Yeah, and I sure didn't know what I was flushing out. Um, have Wishbone give you some food. It's a good two weeks clear grazing ahead. We can spare you. Well, what if you get into some trouble or something? Way I see it, all the trouble is yours. <laughs> Every time you open your mouth, another lie comes out. You just keep your mouth closed. My mom's gonna be awfully mad, too. She ought to oil the daylights out of you. Creek through those trees. Fill the canteens. Bone packed to some meat. You want to get it before you go for the water? Hey! Hey! How far do you think you'd get before I'd notice? I'm gonna fix it where you can't run off no more. You're the one I should hobble. Does it hurt him? No, it doesn't hurt him. Not unless his feelings are hurt. And don't think you're gonna be able to untie it. I have enough trouble with it myself in the morning. You're sure it doesn't hurt him? I'm sure. I want you to know, Mr. Nolan, no matter what happens, I'll always be your friend. Well, I told you to get that meat. Skill it, and have a little bite to eat. without you.
just a warning till we see who he is. Get inside, boy. I want to watch. You get yourself killed. Come out with your gun hand high. Good afternoon. What are you after, mister? This small boy. Sound kind of crazy? That's him, Mr. Gray. Yeah, yeah, it sounds kind of crazy. Wait a minute. I don't know what Davis told you, but I can kind of figure it out. You making out you didn't kill his family? He also tell you that he's going to his Uncle Colby in Eberly? Well, he ain't got no Uncle Colby in Eberly or any place else. He's run away from home. If you put them rifles away, I'll undertake to get him back. I told you you'd say that, Mr. Gray. I'm the only witness against him, and he can't let me get to my uncle. Mr. Gray, my trail boss is with a herd just a few miles north of Eberly. If you're interested in the truth, let's catch up to him. Well? You got my gun. You can put me in the stagecoach and tie my horse on the back. It's, uh, it's out of the way, but... Well, I don't like to call trouble for no one till I hear both sides. But it's a trick! I heard about a half a day's ride. I'll get my horse. I meant to tell you about Jonathan, Davy. I didn't have a chance to untie him. You, you mean he's still hobbled, Mr. Nolan? Yeah. I didn't know it was going to take so long to find you. Gee, Jonathan's probably getting awful hungry. He sure is. And thirsty. Yeah, especially if we have to go all the way back to the herd. Well, maybe we better go take care of Jonathan, Mr. Nolan. Can you take care of this, ma'am? <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Gray. Davy, you sure you want to go with him? I guess I did tell you some pretty big lies. Hey, Mr. Nolan, are you sure you want to go with him? I'll have to take my chances. Come on. Uh, Davy, you, you forgot your frog. Uh, you keep him, ma'am. I don't deserve anything as nice as that. Davy, I want to get one thing settled with you before we go any farther. And you can have a choice. Either that hickory switch Mr. Faber promised you, and I can use it, or your word of honor that you're going back home now without any more trouble. My word of honor? You know what word of honor means. Oh, yes, Mr. Nolan. My father always says that a man's word of honor is sacred. Just like not lying when you're saying your prayers. Well, your father sounds like a good man, even if he is a bounty hunter. Oh, he's just filling in where there ain't enough lawmen. Sure. Well, I bet he's one man that always keeps his word. I can keep my word, too. Good enough. I, I didn't mean to make you mad at me. It's just, well, I, I had to see my father. Sure, Davy. And Mr. Nolan? Yeah? You know, I like you a whole lot. Uh, we, we better go check on Jonathan. Jonathan lives over there. Is that the barn the Indians burned down? <laughs> I hope you don't have to go right back. I know Mom won't fix your supper. Well... Gee, Mom's gonna be so mad. I'll help you out, huh? the door. Ma! Ma! Grandpa! Ma! Ma, I'm 
sorry I made you worry. Why should I worry about you? I never saw you before in my life. I understand, ma'am. I'm sorry to have bothered you. But, Mom! Would you please take him away? Inside. scared me too, Davy. I was trying to find Pop. I didn't find him. Sam Colby's boy? Yes. He's our son. And him? Mr. Nolan Scout from Mr. Faber's trail drive, Ma. This is my ma and my grandpa, Mr. Nolan. And I guess these men are the reason why ma tried to keep us from coming in. Well, you're in now. Take off your gun belt, just as you take off your hat. This is Colby. How long they've been calling the moves? The belt. It means your gun, Mr. Nolan. You're not the one we're waiting for, Mr. Nolan. You're not a bounty hunter. You're not a dirty Judas bounty hunter. My dad's not a Judas. He does what he has for the... You like your power, boy? Why shouldn't he? I asked a question. A man gives me a knee like this, I can't walk straight the rest of my life. I got a right to ask a question, haven't I? Look at it. Won't move. I got a right to ask about who give it to me, haven't I? I guess so. What do you mean, you guess so? You got a bad leg? You got a leg that won't work? You got a leg that sometimes knocks you down. Sometimes you want to run, it knocks you down. You know about that? Spell Mooney. Sam Colby do to you. Now you're asking a question, Mr. Nolan, aren't you? Well, I mean, a bad leg ain't the end of the world. Fix us some supper, Mrs. Colby. Davy, will you build up the fire for me? so friendly to him. Shh. Well, they're paying us no mind. He's your friend, isn't he? Excuse me, ma'am. Could I get you to leave out the pepper? I got a touchy stomach. Food at the penitentiary. I'll leave out the pepper. I guess I'm not the first man to tell you you're a good-looking woman. 
Real good looking woman. Let me help you with the dishes, Miss Colby. Do you have any guns in the house? No. Does your father have any of them fireworks left? Thanks. I'm, I'm not used to feeding so many people. If we shot one through the window, would they see it in town? They'd be bound to. Would they think anything of it? At this time of year? Of course they would. Speak up! What are you whispering about? I was just telling Mrs. Colby how I found her boy. Didn't think you'd be interested. Keep him company, Mooney. Bothering your grandpa long enough. Well, uh, he ain't bothering me none, Jenny. Boy, his age needing to bother his grandpa. I guess plenty of things in here for him to play with. Maybe you could build something. Uh, a fort or something. Oh, oh yes, uh, that's a good idea, Jenny. Come on, boy, I'll, I'll show you how to play Roman soldiers. Yes, Roman soldiers. Now, uh, let me see, we'll, uh, well, we'll lay them right straight out here in a line about five, see? Like that, just the way it starts. Yeah. Yes, five will be enough. Yeah. Getting kind of dark, Mrs. Colby. Mind if I light the lamp? Well, I don't have very much lamp oil left, and I thought we ought to be sparing. What do you think you're doing? Huh? Well, uh, your friend here said it's getting dark. I, I was just going to light the lamp. <laughs> You think I'm blind as well as lame? You leave my grandpa alone! Oh, you... Davy! 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 You think you can handle the boy by yourself? Harve. Oh. Oh, please, Mr. Bodie, it's all my fault. Take him over there and sit down. It was foolish of me. I know how you feel about your bad leg, Mr. Bodie. How do you know? It wasn't my husband's fault. It wasn't? No, it wasn't. Who fired a 45 slug into my knee? My husband is paid to bring men into justice. He could have fired to kill. Why didn't he? I'd have been a lot better off. Why didn't he? I don't know, Mr. Bodie. I don't know. Of course you don't know. I don't blame you. How good you know. It was just a little job. Not even a very big store. Hardware merchandise. We were outside of the town taking a rest. Sitting near some strawberry plants. I was wondering how to divvy up what we got. All of a sudden, the Judas showed up. He must have been following us from a job we'd done three weeks before. He didn't ask me my name, or the time of day, or how I was faring. Before I could get up, he fired a 45 into my knee. That's what he did. There's nothing worse than ridding a man of his kneecap. It lames him for life. 
He can't ever walk straight again. You ever spend any time in jail? No. I have. Five years. I don't mind. I took a risk and I lost. All right. What I did was wrong. And I paid. But that Judas didn't have to cripple me for life, did he? He didn't have to put a 45 into my knee, did he? Now he's coming home. But we're going to welcome him home. You're going to put a 45 into his knee? And make him a cripple like me? I wouldn't do that to anybody. You gonna hurt my pa? I sure am, boy. And a lot worse than he hurt me. But why, mister, why? That's why, boy, that's why. He was doing his duty when he gave you that, wasn't he? Sure he was. But the duty of a bounty hunter has a dirty smell. Vultures get the same smell from their work. Just look at it from my side. A couple of 45s when he comes in that door, and he'll walk like me. He'll be a cripple. How'd you like your pa to walk like me, boy, huh? How'd you like that? Don't answer him, Davy. I don't need an answer! I already got it! I've been locked up for five years with the answer! I laid awake at night and I thought of what I'd do to him. And I find that I wasn't as low as a bounty hunter. I wouldn't do what a bounty hunter did. I wouldn't cripple him. I'll kill him quick and clean. Quick and clean. Clean, clean, clean. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Maketh, maketh me, me to lie, lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Mr. Larch, he lives down the road a ways. Well, I'm your uncle in case he asks you. Good morning, Davy. Howdy, Mr. Larch. I didn't know your ma had company. My uncle, he stand for a spell. I didn't know your pa had a brother. He doesn't. It's my mother's brother. Well, I got a message for your ma. Will you tell her your pa's in town? And as soon as he finishes his business with the sheriff, he'll be home. He said to tell you about an hour. This is what I came for. I know, Davy. We heard. Harv, you take the outside. I'll be at the window. He tries to stable his horse. Bring him in here. You're going to have to watch all four of them, Mooney. Make them stay together. Get on over there with the other two. And don't try nothing funny because I don't mind pulling this trigger. Sit down, lady. Can't we try something, Mr. Nolan? If 
Behave yourself, boy. Be a good boy, Davy. Do what Mr. Nolan says. man at the top of the hill. Get back there. All right, all of you, get over there with her. Get over there. Hurry up. That's right, ma'am. You keep him quiet if you know what's good for all of you. Sir, Mrs. Colby. Jenny, didn't you hear me? I'm back. Here he comes. <laughs> If it hadn't been for these, I never would have found it. <laughs> sure you won't stay on a bit so we can thank you proper, Mr. Nolan. I already stayed a little longer than I aimed to, Mr. Colby. Davy. Sure sorry about your leg. Don't look like you're going to be able to do much traveling for a while. Well, as long as I can do some work around here, it's all right. When bounty hunting gets this close to home, I'm ready to give it up. Sam, you promised that was going to be your last trip, no matter what. And so it was, my dear, so it was. Uh -huh. In spite of yourself. <laughs> sure, thank you for the grub, Miss Colby. I'm not very used to home cooking. <laughs> well, thank you for everything. Sure, welcome. Goodbye, Grandpa. Hey, goodbye, son. Davy, uh, ain't you gonna see me to my horse? Mr. Nolan, would you tell Mr. Faber something for me? Sure, Davy. I guess it's all right for him to know now. I mean, it's not private anymore. Yeah? Well, I, I never meant to be disrespectful to him. But you heard what Ma said about Pa promising it was his last trip. And he was only supposed to be gone a week, and, and it was more than two. And Ma was getting so mad, and she was packing to leave. But I figured, well, she wouldn't leave as long as I was missing. And maybe I could find Pa and bring him home. <laughs> mm. And I wouldn't want Mr. Faber to think I'd put him to all that trouble for nothing. I'll sure tell him, Davy. Don't worry about it.
Whenever you hear a fella telling about how he rode with a trail herd of five, 10,000 steers, you can call him a liar. The most any crew can handle and keep safe is about 3,000, the size of this herd. With the hazards of weather, terrain, stampedes, and Indian raids, that's plenty. Then there's the remuda, the extra horses. That's maybe the most valuable part of the herd and the most vulnerable. Put that many animals together, they spell trouble. And it's my trouble. Gil favors the name, Trail Boss. What are you doing here? Who are you? Oh, you're not going to say who you are. Oh. Hold it. No, you don't. You... What happened? Jeff, you, hurt, you hurt bad? A stranger in camp. Well, who was he up to? What did he look like? He was a boy. A boy? Yeah, no more than 12, I'd say. He was sneaking around here looking in everybody's face. But he was not alone, senor Fever. What do you mean? There were others out there in the dark. I saw them too. Well, what were they, Indians or what? I don't know. They were gone before I could make them out. Oh, this wasn't an Indian kid. Yeah, we'll double the guard. You'd all better get out there and quiet those beefs down. Oh, kettle, kettle, oh. Hello, oh, kettle. Hello, oh, kettle. Settle down now. You... That flame moss box, if you had brain one in your head, you'd know nobody's gonna hurt you. Hello, oh, kettle. What happened in there? Had some visitors. You see anything? Saw a couple of riders through there, but I don't think they got near camp. It's over by the Ramuda, probably after the horses. Indians? No, no. We'll keep a double watch until morning, though. Keep your eyes open. Rowdy, you figure they'll be back? I don't know, must have scared them off. Well, all the same, I'm glad it's almost morning. Yeah. Now, they were after the horses, all right. They're probably Indians. Small raiding party, seven or eight of them. Came in from both sides. Well, what about the boy? What was he doing in our camp? You sure you weren't just seeing things, Jeff? Uh, you know, dreaming or something? Does this look like a dream? A small man, maybe, but a boy. Well, what would a white boy be doing with Indians? Could be it wasn't Indians. What's these around here? Mr. Fravor, look here. 
Awful small boot print. Yeah, I told you. Well, let's track them down if we can. Just a favor. Can I come along? Oh, come on. Wishbone, get ready to move out. We should be back shortly. Horses tracks over here. Unshot. Well, white men can ride unshot ponies too. Yeah. Maybe they met the kid here. Yeah, probably in that thicket. Maybe he's hiding from them. Or maybe he's still there. Pistol for a half pint like you. Anybody ever tell you kids ain't supposed to be carrying guns? Yeah, you could hurt somebody with a horse pistol like that. You already have. It was an accident. I ought to turn you over my knee. Just try, mister. Say, boy, uh, what were you doing coming sneaking into our camp like that? I didn't steal nothing. Didn't say you did. Why, was you fixing to? Anyways, I didn't. Not even nothing to eat. Are you hungry, boy? Well, don't worry about me none. I know how to get along. Just shoot me back my pistol. You figuring I'm pulling the holdup? I figure to get me a rabbit. Hey, you figure on holding up some rabbits with this bunderbuss? I can do it. Anyways, it's all I got. All alone, are you? Maybe you better tell me all about it. What do you mean? Now, you weren't alone last night. Who were the others? I don't know. Honest, mister. I didn't even know there was anybody to laughter. I heard them riding away, and then they all come right past here. Are you trying to tell me you're all alone out in the plains here? I am. At least I am now. I was traveling with some horse traders the last few days, but I left them last night after I seen your herd yesterday. Horse traders? What horse traders? I'm from Colorado and going to Missouri. The boss is a fellow they call Nick Mason. Well, that explains a bit of it. Yeah. Well, who's, who's Nick Mason? Probably the biggest horse thief on the plains. Doesn't even bother with single horses. Steals whole herds. Smart operation, though. At least smart enough not to have been caught yet. So you come into our camp all alone, did you, boy? I did, I swear. If that was them last night, I didn't know anything about it. I left them making camp on the other side of the ridge. All right. Let's keep going. What are you going to do? Take back to Nick Mason. Better sure your rifle's barrel's up. There's healthier things than riding into a horse thief's camp. Give me mine. And you can learn. Guns ain't for kids. Yeah, we don't need any help, sir. And uh, you let me do the talking, will you? You don't give me my gun. What choice have I got?
Nick, look here. Let him come on in. Don't worry, Grab. I can handle them. There's only four of them. If it's fight they want, we can give them plenty. That's far enough, right there. Hello, Nick. Wow, Jeff Barkley. You can relax, all of you. Come on in, Jeff. You're welcome. See, you found a boy. I was wondering what happened to him after he did out last night. Nick, this is my boss, Mr. Favor. Rowdy Yates, Pete Nolan. This is Nick Mesa. Howdy. You must be with the herd we saw over the ridge yesterday. Well, any friend of Barkley's is a friend of mine. No, I didn't know that. Didn't realize Jeff was friends with horse, uh, traders. Some folks could eye a ride easy at the way you said traders. Sounded almost like you meant thieves. But I don't eye her easy. I got nothing to hide and nothing to apologize for. No harm meant, Nick. No? Maybe you better watch the company you keep. Maybe you ain't as welcome here as I thought. What did you come here for? I'm just curious. I'd heard so much about you all these years. Sure. Well, now you see me. You can get going. There's something else I'm curious about. Yeah? And those horses you got. It's quite a herd. You pick them all up in Colorado uh, trading? That's right. And now you're shipping them to Missouri for sale, where they couldn't be uh, identified by anybody who you traded with. You see any of your brand? No, thanks to the boy here. What do you mean? Might you have some unshod ponies in there? Ones that could pass off as Indian ponies? What are you driving at, Mr. Favor? You don't know. If you're accusing me of trying to steal your horses, you better change your tune quick. First place, if I wanted to trade, I'd have traded. Maybe. Sure I would. But if somebody stole on you, I want to know about it. How about it, Jeff? Well, somebody did, Nick, sometime early this morning before dawn. It might have been Comanches. Well, if there's Comanches about, I'm glad to hear about it. Nothing I'd like better than to get at my herd. But I ain't sure it was Comanches. I ain't sure I care about what you ain't sure about. I got all the horses I can handle now. I ain't done any trading for weeks. I can take your word for that. That's right. And my word's good. That's true, Mr. Favor. All right, let's keep it that way. Just remember, I'm not interested in trading any of my string. All right, Joe, you can get down now. Huh? You ain't gonna leave me. Well, this is where you come from. Oh, no, you don't. I had my fill of them. Why, what'd he do? Nothing. Nothing wrong with him. He's an all right kid. But kids don't fit in with my plans now. I was going to drop him soon anyway. What are you suggesting we do? Just leave him out here alone? Well, that's not my worry. Somebody's got to worry about him. He can't make it by himself. I can't so. Let me down. Shut up and stay here. You prepared to take him over, Rowdy? Nobody else is going to. All right, boy. If you want to be the papa he's been looking all over Texas for, good riddance. Just remember, no trading. Don't tempt me, Mr. Favor. All right, son, you've put us off long enough. I've got some explaining to do. Now let him eat. Let him eat. He's hungry. I ain't gonna let him starve to death. Hey, what did this fellow Nick Mesa mean uh, about you looking for your pa? Is that why you were in our camp? Well, why our camp? All I know about him, he's with some trail herd coming up from Texas. So, ever since Ma died, I've been traveling around looking. Well, uh, what's his name? I don't know. You don't know? Well, what's your name? Joey Gardner, but it ain't the same. Mr. Gardner's my stepfather. He married my ma after Pa left us. And you don't know his name? Ma never talked about him. She was that mad at him. Well, what did he look like? I never saw him. 
You never saw him. Well, how did you ever expect to recognize him? I don't know. I guess... I just hope... Maybe I'd recognize him. Maybe he looks like me or something. I don't know. Tell me, son. Why'd you run away from me, then? I guess I just got scared. You looked at me so mean. I'm sorry I shot you. We've lost enough time already. Better get started to move out. I can help, Mr. Faber. I can ride all on my way. Now, look, Joey. You're just going to the next town, and that's all. Understand? Till then, you can help Jesus wrangle the Remuda. Yes, sir. Finish it, then come. Uh, Joey, you don't, uh, you don't have any clues at all about uh, what your old man looks like, huh? Just a few. Uh, Ma said once that he has a scar on his neck, right under his left ear, slanting down and forward. And I heard Mr. Gardner say he was in prison once. And I know his initials, GF. Well, don't look at me. I ain't his poem. I ain't got no scar. And uh, there's two men on the crew with the initials, uh, Gus French and George Fuller. Ain't neither of them got a scar on their neck. Probably changed the name anyway. Being in prison, they using a traveling name, maybe. I know. Could be anybody. Whatever made you figure it was this herd, anyway? I didn't. I just try them all. I tried a lot of them already. Well, I guess you're out of luck this time, too, Joey. Maybe I'll never find him. Ah, of course you will. Don't give up yet. See you later. Gee, I'd like my pa to be somebody like Rowdy. Uh, yeah. Uh, come on, I'll see you get him out. Jesus, how's he doing? Best wrangler I've had since the start. <laughs> See, I told you I'd earn my way. Well, it's only too bad you don't like the work. I like it. But I'd rather be working with you. Well, we'll wait till you get a little more experience, huh? But Mr. Favor said I can only stay till we get to the next town. Yeah, that's right. Rowdy, you think he might change his mind? Well, I don't know. I, I wouldn't count on it. We'll see, huh? He's a great kid, but I don't know. What do you mean? I don't know. It don't make sense, Rowdy, the way he showed up looking for his pa. He looks to me like a trap. What are you talking about? He's only 12 years old. I mean something Nick Mesa cooked up. I've been looking for you. Nick, what are you doing here? Well, we're laying off for a day or two. Rest in the herd, got good grass. Thought I'd mosey over and take a look at this remuda that Mr. Favor's so worried about me trading for. You ain't gonna try for it, are you, Nick? <laughs> I told you the truth. I got more than I can handle now. Had a real good spring round up in Colorado. Good pickings. Do well this trip. That's fine, because uh, Mr. Favor's remuda is only average, and besides, he'd probably put up a fight. Ah, forget Mr. Favor. Let's talk about you. How you coming along? 
Oh, can't complain. Quite a calm down for you, punching cows. It's a living. You was considered some pumpkins in Colorado. Is that what jail did for you? Scared you? Taught me some things don't pay. I make them pay. And so could you. I feel I owe you something. No, it wasn't your fault I was caught, Nick. Now, you were working for me. You lost five years of your life because of me. I figure you got something good coming to you, from me. I don't want it that way anymore. See, I fear I'm going into ranching, and I'm saving up a stake. I'll pay you a lot more than a favor, Will, for that whole drive on into Missouri. A lot more. And after that, if you want, you can be a partner. Horse thieving, huh? Trading. We'll gather some stock around Missouri and Kansas and head on back over to Colorado for sale. I don't think so, Nick. I didn't like territorial prison. Things like that don't happen anymore. I'm big now, Jeff. No. No, I, I, I don't want to run out on the drive. Mr. Favor has been decent to me. You know where I'm camped. I'll be there another day. Yeah. Where's uh, Barkley? Doctor! Luckily, you ain't being paid for sleeping in the saddle. Sorry, Mr. Faber, I was thinking of something. Ain't got your own time. You're supposed to be hunting strays. Yes, sir. Hey, was there anybody else up here with you? What makes you think there was? Just ask. No, nobody. Don't let that dreaming interfere with strays wandering under your nose. Now, look, Mr. Faber, you quit riding me. Riding you? Well, you have been some. If I have, you had some of it coming. You ain't exactly the most conscientious hand I got. Well, maybe that ain't my ambition. Maybe that's the trouble. It doesn't been hard to see you don't think much of being a drover. Well, Jeff, as long as you're taking the responsibility of the job, why not do it right? Responsibility what for? For the peanuts you pay me? You got a way of making it fast, or you will? Well, maybe I do. Yeah, but legal? Now, what do you mean, legal? I just said it. A man don't say that for no reason at all. What's the matter? Somebody in this crew see me before? Somebody told you something? Told me what? That's it, ain't it? That's why you've been riding me? Somebody told you I've been in prison? Prison? I didn't know that, Jeff. Sure you do. You're just like the rest of them. You won't give a man a chance to live it down. fired off five shots and five Indians went down. But there was one more coming on, and I was out of bullets. So it was hand to hand, knives, right there on the edge of that precipice. One false move and we was both goners. So, there we was, me and the biggest engine you ever saw. And it was some fight. First it was me on top, and then it was him. All afternoon. And you know what happened. What happened? That Indian killed me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a humdinger, Joey? Hey, Wish, I hear old Jim Bridger used to tell it better. Well, he'd better. It's his story. It happened to him. It didn't happen to him either. <laughs> uh, speaking of Indians, we'll still ride double guard all night tonight, especially on the Remuda. Well, now, uh, do you think they'll come back, boss? White or red? Don't matter. You see anything, shoot it. A little timer, it's about time for you to hit the bedroll, isn't it? Hey, you've had a pretty big day. Nah, I'm all right. Hey, Jesus, which guard do I take? Well, senor, there is most danger just before the dawn. That is when the sharpest eye is needed on the last watch. All right, you be sure to wipe me. See, si, see, si, I will. What a kid. Looking for his paw in a place as big as Texas. Yeah, can you imagine a daddy leaving a kid like that? Be something to settle a man down, raising a sprout like that. Did you find yourself a nice soft spot here, Joey? Is this all right? Yeah, sure, any place here. I 
Get your blanket out of the wagon here. Oh, thanks. Where are you going to sleep? I'll be right over there. Hmm, that's good. Rowdy? Yeah? You got a scar under your left ear? See one, Joey? What are your initials? Your real initials? Hey, Joey, uh... You know, if... You know, if everyone on this tribe, I'm the last one that could be your father. Twelve years ago, you know, <laughs> I wasn't any bigger than you are right now. Sure, I understand. Shucks. I guess it don't matter much. I mean... Um... Sometimes I think I've been looking so long. You know, seem to do no good. Well, you're gonna find him one of these days. I don't know. Maybe I haven't even got a pa. I mean, maybe he's dead or something. And maybe I just ought to pick out a fellow I like and. And what? Kind of make him my pa. I mean, be partners like that, if it's all right with him. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's... That's a good idea, Joey. But any any fellow would be real proud. But, uh, you know, I think you ought, ought to wait a little longer. I really do. You, you know, you're, you're going to run into the real article. And when you do, it's... Uh, well, that's going to be a lot better, having a real paw, don't you think? Rather than a second-hand one. I don't know. It might be so. Sure it is. You go ahead and get some sleep, huh? Come on. You, you get the sack and I'll uh, wake you up last time, huh? Good night. Good night. I wish there was something we could do for that kid. Yeah. Like what? Help him find his pa or whatever. That's a big order. Howdy, son. You been down all right? Yes, sir. Here. Use my bedroll for a pillow. I'll be riding Nighthawk for a while. Well, I'll be taking the next watch when you come in. You can use mine. Thanks. How's your arm? Oh, it's all right. Don't hardly hurt anymore. That's good. What's this? Hmm? What? On your hat band. Oh, that's my pa's initials on Navajo Silver. It's the only thing of his I got. Oh, he gave it to me a long time ago. Where was that? Out in Colorado, Pueblo. What was your ma's name? Hazel, for her eyes, she used to sing. Hazel. How old are you, son? Twelve. Well, not quite, but I will be in September. September, 12 years ago. Something happened to you then, too, mister? Yeah, something happened to me. Something bad? Did you ever see a par? Did your ma ever tell you anything about him? She always used to cry whenever she started. But I heard Mr. Gardner say once that he was in prison, my pa. I don't know why. Because he must have done something wrong. But he got out. And then I heard he was working trail drives out of Texas. That's why I come here when... Your ma died? Last winter. So there was nothing for me to stay for with Mr. Gardner not liking me much. Do you know my mother, mister? Huh? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, what was her full name? Hazel Gardner. Hazel Millets was her name when she was a little girl. What's your name, mister? 
Um, Jeff Barkley. And that's uh, JB, not GF. <laughs> What you'd call a real wide awake night hawk. Acting like he's a million miles away. He ain't. What he's thinking is. You supposed to be writing gun? Come on, let's stay awake. Get moving. Look, Mr. Faber. I uh I want to draw my pay. What for? Well, I'm going. I'm quitting. Not because I've been riding you. That's right. I've had about enough of it. Come on, what's the real reason? I've got other plans. You signed on for the whole drive, you know. I don't have to pay you off unless you've got a real good reason for quitting. I know. And that don't bother you. You must have a pretty good reason. That'll be none of your business. You didn't run into Nick Mesa out there today by any chance, did you? Now, look, Mr. Favor, I could have just left. What did you say you knew Nick from Colorado, wasn't it? Do you have anything to do with your going to prison? What's that matter? It matters. It's my business, nobody else's. Something else I've been wondering about. I thought so. What's your real name, Jeff? I'm going to get my gear. Anything, boss? He ain't riding guard anymore. Jet boy, you go back to sleep. Where are you going with your saddlebags and all? Never mind. Uh, I'm sorry, boy. I I gotta be moving. That's the way I am. Bye, Joey. He's running out on us, Joey. What do you mean, Mr. Favor? Just what I said. Now look, Mr. Favor, let it go. And just don't try to stop me. If you won't take care of things, I won't make you. You won't what, Mr. Favor? What are you talking about? Now don't start anything. You got a scar on your neck. Run to your left ear, slanting down and forward. You're him. You're my Paula. Joey. Look, Joey. I never knew about you. Joey, your mother never told me. I went to prison. I didn't even know about you. Uh, you see, she told me she never wanted to see me again. But you're going away? Well, don't you see, Joey? It's too late. You don't want me. <laughs> I can't explain, but it's too late, Joey. Sure. 
I can't explain. <laughs> Wait a minute, Joey. Wait a minute. Joey, maybe you're well rid of it. I'm going after it. I'm afraid it wouldn't do much good, Joey. I'm going anyways. Look, why not let her wait till morning? She'll just be over at Nick Mason's. said about uh, maybe picking somebody out, you know, and being partners with him. You know, calling him, huh? Well, I'd be real proud if, if you'd... Don't you see? I always know it wasn't true. I'm gonna take my turn at night, Hawking. Look, you don't have to. Yeah. Jury does. Hey, Sons! Here, Senor. Old-timer? It was Indians. I think Jesus hit one of them. You see who it was? No, senor. Somebody hit me from behind. I was dizzy. It was a bunch of dark figures howling like Comanche. Well, anybody can howl. I know. I, I fired at one of them, but I don't know. They got the remuda. Well, we still got the night string. Scarlet, you hold the herd with the regular crew. I'll take the rest of the men and go after them. Where to? I'd say Nick Mesa's would be the first stop. My most favorite was Indians. I saw them. Maybe you were a little excited, Joey. No, I saw them. You sure it wasn't Nick Mesa with Jeff Barkley, maybe? No, I saw him. Don't you believe me, Mr. Faber? Sure, Joey. Doesn't matter anyway. We'll track down whoever it was. Bailey, bring in the extra guards. Rowdy, get the night string ready. in the middle of the night, no telling what'll happen to him. He wanted to go after his father. He's probably heading for Nick Mesa's. Yeah, well, he said there were Indians, and there's Indians between him and Nick Mesa. Well, we'll find out, because we're heading for Nick's. Too early for breakfast. What do you want? Our horses. Somebody steal your precious remuda? Even with a double guard? Now, don't tell me you don't know anything about it. And I'm telling you to come to the wrong place. Unless you want to buy replacement horses, in that case, I'll be willing to sell. What are you going to do? Give me your word again? I'll do better. Go ahead. Look through my herd. See if you find anything of yours. He's telling you the truth, Mr. Favor. I wouldn't lie to you. 
And I'm telling you frankly, Mr. Favor, I don't like this any better than you do. If there are Comanches around here, nobody's safe. Looks like the kid was right. What about the kid? What about him? He took off. We don't know if he rode or ran, but we figured he'd be heading for here. You don't suppose he went trailing the Comanches? Be just like him. Trying to prove his old man wasn't a thief? Old man? You? It'll be daylight soon. We'd better get after him. Wait. <laughs> and look sharp. Jesus must have hit somebody. Mr. Favor, over here. It's Joey's boot track.
all right, boy, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Huh? Huh? <laughs> You're crying. Uh, Joe. Joey, I'm, I'm sorry. For crying? No. No, for walking out on you. Can you forgive me, boy? Pa. By the way, you didn't say uh, what brought you by this way. I never could resist fighting an engine. And having that kind of fun for a long time. Maybe I made a mistake. Mistake? I'll beat myself out of a customer. <laughs> See, you got your remuda back. I uh, do owe you some thanks. Oh, no. I was looking out for my own interest. You know, if a man could just trust you. You still don't think you could trust me? Not around a horse. You're just like an Indian. You're the first to understand that. I grew up with them. I learned their ways. To them, horse stealing is a way to gain prestige. You feel that way about it, too? Huh? It's the only thing I know well enough to make my pile. I'd sure hate to catch you trading at my remuda. Because I'd sure hate to take a shot at you. <laughs> I might hate that, too. I guess we'll be leaving you here. Oh, yeah? You and who? Me and Joey. My son. The son you ran out on? But you don't... No, no, he's got a right to say that to me, Joey. You see, I lost my head. I was scared. I thought maybe I wasn't fit to raise you. All those years I spent in prison, they sort of knocked all the decent sense out of my head. And I got kind of mixed up. I... Well, I'm not explaining it too good, but... I think you are. Anyway, I think I got some of that decent sense back now. I got a stake in the bank down home, Mr. Favor. I've had my eye on a place on the Brazos. And I'd kind of like to get settled before summer ends. Well, I hate losing two good hands, but... I think we can scrape together the pay you got coming. No, no, no. You don't owe me a cent, Mr. Favor. It's more like I owed you. If you need us, Mr. Favor, we'll be glad to stay on at the end of the drive, won't we, Pa? You do luck your Pa says, Joey. You get settled before winter sets in. We'll miss you, though. You ain't sore. I mean, Pa's my real Pa. Oh, that's better than a second-hand one any time, Joey. You be sure to stop in and see us whenever you're down in the Brazos. Just ask for Jeffrey Faulkner and son. Well, you can count on that. That's Jeffrey with a G. He's a real nice kid. As if you like kids, you know? Yeah. Sell him off. Hey, Lisa. 
any critics heard yet? No. Pete's out looking for them now. What happens if they don't show up? He will. Told me in Laredo he'd sunk every last cent he had into this herd. If we don't pick him up, he can go bust. He ain't a cattle man, is huh? I just fly by nighter, picking up the stock from the smaller spreads, gambling on good prices in Abilene. Well, maybe he ain't worth waiting for. It's Pete now. He'll make up our minds for us. Good! Hold him up! Find the credit card? Yeah, sure did. They'll be coming over that rise any second, but don't ask me how he did it. What do you mean? No use me telling you. You wouldn't believe it unless you saw it. Thieves, I think. Yours? Expecting Roy Craddock's heard. Well, it's the same thing. I'm his trail boss. He turned them over to me. Oh. Consignment papers. Something bothering you, Roddy? Where you drove us for, sir? You ain't got them all on drag, have you? Well, I ain't got them, period. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're, you're not telling me you brought these cattle in all by yourself. You've got eyes. Now, oh, wait a minute, Forrester. The way I see it, a trail boss that really knows his business doesn't need much more than a good lead steer. I haven't a set of brains wouldn't do no harm. We'd get some of the men and bring them on in. You don't have to bother. I'll get them down myself. No, no, I'm responsible for them now. I may not know what I'm doing, but I know enough not to take full chances like that. Pete, I want a full tally on them. Right. Well, you're going to a lot of trouble, Faber. Those consignment papers to check out, all right? Oh, it shouldn't take too long. I know you wouldn't mind. Welcome to stay for supper if you want. Supper? I was expecting to make the whole drive with you. I could use another hand. If droving's all you got in mind. Since there's nothing else. Roddy? Yeah, it's all right with me. You start out on drag. Drag? Now, hold on. Every new man in this outfit starts out on drag. Where you wind up is up to you. Right, fair enough. Not that far from the bottom of the top. I guess I'll start with my own beeves. Think he's half as good as he thinks he is? One way to find out. Work him. I told you it'd work. Questions? None that I couldn't answer. Dave is not as stupid as you think. Or as you think either, Craddock. With a full crew, he'd never put on another ten drovers. Well, maybe not. But I still don't see how you figure you can handle them all by yourself. Handle the key man, favor, his ramrod and his scout, and the rest are easy. Now you see that you and the men are at the right place at the right time. Real sure yourself, ain't you? Uh-huh. It looks like you're not. It's my herd we're risking down there, not yours. 750 head for 3,000? Well, it seems to me that's worth a little risk. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I have a job now. Now I'm going to make a good impression on the boss. Save yourself a day, maybe more. 
Like swinging the herd. Cutting south following the creek bed. Pete? Well, there's a creek over there, all right, but it's running full of water when I saw it. Well, it rained up in the hills last night. That's just the wash coming down. Be hardly a trickle by tonight. Any quicksand? You don't have to worry about that. Well, maybe it might be better than scaling those canyon walls. They might follow that creek all the way through, Pete. Take a look at the valley on the other side. It might make good bed ground. Anything else I can do while I'm up? No, that'll be all. It's, uh, it's a long ways from drag up to that creek. No, I had some off time. I took a little ride to wash the dust off. Because maybe uh, you know this part of the country, too, huh? Yeah, maybe. Howdy says you're ready to move up. Why don't you relieve Quince at flying? Anything you say. You'd be real glad to get out of the dust for a while. Well, there's no dust at all up at the point. Strangers and all, but you do need help. 
No, thank you. Our herd's right over that rise. We can get a shoe on in no time, and you can be on your way. Listen, don't you understand English for the last time? No, thank you. Look, ma'am, he's only trying to help you out. Listen, will you, will you please leave me alone? Whatever you say, miss. Boss, we can't just go off and leave her here like this. Lady knows what she's doing. Oh, by the way, I don't suppose you've got a gun, do you? What difference does it make? Oh, it doesn't matter to me, but you can't possibly make it back to town before nightfall, so I'd suggest you make camp early, get a fire going, keep it going all night. That just might scare the Panthers away. Well, so long, miss. Oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah, but there are laws against kidnapping. Yeah, but... but oh, please, wait! That was. Could you warm up a cup of coffee for the lady? Coffee? Why, sure. What are you doing with that? Well, you told me to. Never mind what I told you. Get a clean cup and don't forget the saucer. Saucer? Yes, a saucer. Yeah, I'll get Aces to put a shoe on his horse. He ought to be all right in no time. Go ahead, then go out and shake up the men. I want the herd in bed ground before sundown. Oh, we'll make it. Well, you make sure we make it. Well, I, I kind of thought that... Uh, thought? What? Nothing. Oh. Oh, right over this way. Mr. See? Nothing to be afraid of. Put that back on the fire. Sorry to serve it to you like this, ma'am. All our good crockery's been put away. Well, this is just fine. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Wishbone, uh, cook. Uh, this is Miss Sheila Brewster. Hi. I do. Uh, may I get you something else, ma'am? Maybe a sandwich or something? Oh, no. No, this is just fine. Thank you. Maybe you could try getting me a cup of coffee. Huh? I'll see what I can do. Oh, you just move out in this area, Miss Brewster? Well, um, no, I'm visiting friends. In town? Mm-hmm. Uh, Probably worry about you. Well, yes, I, I suppose they are. So, um, as soon as you can get that shoe on my horse, I'd... It'll just be a few minutes, then I'll uh, have a man going to town with me. Oh, oh no. Well, I, I don't want to put you in any more trouble. No trouble. Besides, that road to Clarksville is pretty bad in the dark. Well, I can manage it, believe me. Oh, I'm sure, but I'd feel better about it. Say your favor. Excuse me a minute. The horse. Senor Rowdy Bringy. It belongs to the senorita. Uh -huh. It's very strange. The horse has the brand of the United States Cavalry. Nothing strange about it. It's also got a cavalry saddle. How did she get it? I ain't asked you yet. Look, you uh, get the horse shot and then keep it without its strength. Si, senor. Will it be much longer, Mr. Favor? No, oh, only until you level with me, Miss Brewster. Level? I, I don't know what you mean. 
about where you got that army mount? It, it's the horse they gave me. Your friends in Clarksville? Yes. Yes, the only trouble with that is there's no such place as Clarksville around here. Listen, you have no right to question me. Will you, will you just give me my horse back and let me go? Look, I don't want to have the army or the law down on my neck. I'll let you go when you tell me where you got the horse and what you're doing out here. Well, will you just let me go and forget you ever saw me? Sorry, Miss Brewster. Well, you can't keep me here. What say I take you into town, then, the sheriff? You wouldn't dare. You haven't given me any reason not to. Oh, please, Mr. Favor, I beg you. Uh, all right, here's your coffee. No, 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 wait. After all the trouble no, I went to... Stay back, Mr. Favor. Now, look, put that down before you hurt somebody, please. I'm warning you. Oh, God, boss, it's worse than if she knew what she was doing. Yeah. Please, Miss Brewster. My horse, Mr. Favor, I just want my horse and I want to get out of here. Are you any good with that, Miss? I hope you are, because I'm going to give you three to hand that back. Otherwise, you'd better start shooting. Well, hold on, hold on now. It's a shame to put a hole in such a pretty face. One, two... Well, now look what you've gone and done. You made her cry. That's a funny thing, Wishbone. That's what I usually do to women. tell you. When we start moving out again, you'll be working with me. With you? You mean scouting? Yeah, with both of us working out front, we can cover more country and find the best trail in less time. Makes sense. Hope you don't mind. I don't mind. It's my idea. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Easy, Clay. Just some old friends. What are you doing this close to the herd? It's been a long time between visits. I haven't had a chance to get away. That's why we're this close. And sticking our necks out. My men are itchy. They're getting tired of just sitting around doing nothing. Maybe they prefer sweating and eating dust all day, pushing a herd. Yeah, now that you mention it, they would. Especially if it's theirs. Why the stall? It's the way we figured it, the herd's in the right place. And I'm the one who got it here. I'll say thank you when the whole job's done. I heard a lay over in this valley for a spell. I'll uh, talk the trail boss into it. What's the advantage in that? There's a town beyond the ridge. The droves will be let loose on it, half crew at a time. We'll be watching for them. Care of it, Senor Clay. You know, I tried, Mr. Favor, honestly. Coming out west, marrying an officer, living in a camp. It all seemed like the most wonderful and exciting dream come true. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. No, maybe if you told somebody else sooner, you wouldn't even be out here now. Well, what happened to change this dream of yours? Oh, I don't know. Everything seems so different. The people, the kind of life. So crude and harsh. Well, it's a new country. It's bound to be a little crude. Mm, perhaps, but I'm not used to it. What about this fiancé of yours? Uh, can you find him any different? Oh, I suppose not. Oh, he, he helped me. He... He made things easy for me, but he didn't understand. Understand what exactly? I was lonely and frightened. 
And I needed him so much, but he was never there. I hardly had a minute with him. Well, you ought to know an army officer can't call his time his own. Not even for his own wedding. The day before we were to be married, he went off on some kind of patrol. I didn't even unpack my own wedding dress. Well, a patrol doesn't last forever. And I don't imagine he's having the best time in the world. What do you think he's going to feel when he comes back and finds you gone? Well, he'll be hurt, I suppose, but he'll get over it. And it'll be better this way. For him or for you? For both of us. Don't you see, I can't marry him. Feeling the way I do about his kind of life, hating every minute of it, I'd make him miserable. Seems he at least ought to have a chance to have his say. What's the use? He can't change the way I feel. So I'd appreciate it if you'd let me go. I have enough money to buy a ticket back home. I can leave the horse in town. The army can get it back. Whatever you say. You can leave it tomorrow when Wishbone goes in for the supplies. Thank you, Mr. Favor. Here you are, Miss Bruce. It's nice and hot. Oh, thank you, Mr. Yates. I'll take that for you. What's the matter? Is she a cripple or something? What? Well, it seems to me if she's healthy enough to go running wild all over this country, she's healthy enough to clean up her own mess. Maybe you ought to learn to keep your big, fat mouth shut. Not me, Rowdy. Not when there's something that needs saying. Nobody asked you! Just a minute, Mr. Yates. I'd like to hear his opinion. No, you wouldn't. It's not very flattering. I'm willing to listen. All right. Where do you get off expecting everything to be so perfect? What have you done to deserve the world tied up in a pretty pink ribbon? I don't. No? Some poor Jasper asked you to marry him, and he isn't enough. You have to have everything else, the way you want it. People, the country, the kind of living. Now, why does it all have to change for you? Do you ever think of uh, meeting things halfway? Go on. You're not just lonely and frightened. You're scared green. So scared you're running. Instead of grabbing and holding, fighting it out. Making the best of it. Well, I've tried. No, you haven't. And you never will. So you go on back home where it's warm and safe and comfortable. Where you can have everything you want just the way you want it. All served up on a silver platter by dumb jaspers like him. Thank you for your interest, Mr. Forrester. Anytime. Good night. You know, I sure wish you were stupid. I didn't know your job or something. I'd have an excuse to knock that car out of you. Say, that was uh, quite a speech, Clay. I thought you'd get so head up about anything. Mm, she rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> so I noticed. You know, it's a funny thing now, now. People most hate in others, but uh, they most hate in themselves. Chance finding grass or water is as good as this again, so might as well lay over till tomorrow and give the men a rest. Yeah, might as well. Oh, Wish. You can uh, go into town, get supplies anytime you want. Be a long, empty stretch ahead of us. All right. No money, no supplies. Yeah. Oh, another thing. See that uh, Miss Brewster gets on the stage. You're all right. Poor little thing. She hardly slept a wink all last night. I heard her tossing and turning, crying even. Oh, too bad. And get them clean and be quiet about it. Don't want you waking up that little lady.
Good morning, Miss Brown. Oh, good morning, Miss. Did you have a good night's sleep? Yes, thank you. Oh, fine. You just sit right down and I'll rustle you some breakfast. Oh, no, you don't have to go to any trouble. No, it's no trouble at all. Thank you. Beautiful morning, isn't it? Isn't it? Is, uh, Mr. Favor around? No, he just left. I'll do some branding. But he told me to be sure you got on the stagecoach. Uh, I'll be ready in about an hour. Well, there's no hurry. Well, you just let me know when you're ready, ma'am. Uh, buttons are at the bottom of the box. But you don't have to do it, you know. Well, I want to. Well, fine. You just go right ahead. Uh, you like it, Chris? Yes, I love it. Fine. How about a fresh horse, Jesus? Anyone want a piece, Senor Clay? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, not him. Why not? He belongs to somebody. Well, in a way, he's not fully broken, and Senor Scarlett is the only one who can ride him. Ah, you mean the only one so far? Senor, no, you will be hurt. I saddled my horse. The new drover, Senor Forrester. He's either short on brains or long on nerve, and he's liable to get both kicked out of him. I tried to stop him. Why? Let him learn for himself. losing good hands. Well, thanks anyway. You get in there and see Wishbone. He'll fix that arm up. I'll get you. Just a scratch. Not enough to keep you out any work anyway. Thanks, Wishbone. I'll do it, Wishbone. I don't need any help from... Just hold still, Mr. Forrester. I, uh, thought this kind of thing was too crude for you. People can usually adjust to things when they're honest with themselves. Are you honest with yourself, Mr. Forrester? Hmm? Do you practice what you preach? What do you mean? Accepting things the way they are, meeting people halfway. Oh, that was very good advice you gave me. Look, uh, get down with it, will you? You'll hurt yourself. You know these people that you talk about? Scared green? Well, these people... 
people that are frightened, they usually do one of two things. They run or they attack. They keep challenging. They keep fighting back. And that's exactly what you're doing. Me? Oh, you're so scared. You're so frightened of others not accepting you, disliking you. And you make sure of it. Of all the crazy ideas. Well, sometimes it doesn't work out. At least not here. Not with Mr. Favor and Rowdy and all the others. They see through you. In spite of yourself, they see through you. Well, how does it feel? I don't know what you're talking about. The bandage. Hmm? Is it comfortable? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, here, I'll, I'll clean and mend this. Get yourself another shirt. Shame to waste the time. Got it to waste? Go on back. Relax. Now, now anything you say. Some place. Where's everybody else? Mac away is all set to go. What about you? Well, that's what I came up to tell you. It's about time. Baines, get the man. You won't need him. That's supposed to mean something? I'm cutting out. Deal's off. Just like that. And this isn't going into reasons you wouldn't understand anyway. I understand this. You were in on this from the beginning. We worked it out together, and I spent every last cent I could get my hands on for that herd. You'll get it back when we get to Abilene. Even make a good profit. I think I'd settle for that when I can get that whole herd. Can you? Favor will have something to say about that. You tell him? No, but I will if you try anything. Well, what if I tell him? You better play it my way, Craddock. Make an honest dollar for a change. Put that thing away. You want Favor's man to hear you. What difference does it make now? Well, nothing's changed that much. That herd's still down in the valley. We're still here. Just have to figure another angle, that's all. Yeah. You just saved Forrester for me. It's funny what'll happen to a man when he gets religion. Where you been? I'm just looking around. Found some good grazing on the other side of the ridge. Ought to be able to make it by sundown if we started now. What are you all the time pushing for? I just think we ought to roll while the rolling's good. And we'll rest while the resting's good. Look, for the last time, take it easy, will you? Brewster wasn't ready to go yet, and well, anyway, I had to get something ready for the fellas to eat. What is the project now, Miss Brucey? Going into the tailoring business? Well, it all started with a button on Wishbone's vest, and the rest of your men saw me, and I couldn't resist them. Oh, it really wasn't necessary. Well, I think it is, Mr. Bailey. You've, you've all been so kind, and this, this seems to be the only way I can show my gratitude. All right, but uh, I'm afraid you're going to have to disappoint some of the men, you see. Wishbone has to get into town right after dinner, so you'd better get ready to go. Did Mr. Forrester come back? I uh, just left him over at the string. Well, fine. I think this belongs to him. Wouldn't surprise me at all if I ended up going into town all by my lonesome. Hey, boss. Wait, 
chance to give Garson Collins the day off? Day off? Yeah, I've been making my rounds. I couldn't find him anywhere. What? Well, pretty close to town. Close enough for temptation to some of the fellas. You better get tempted to get another job, then. You got somebody out covering him? Yeah, I had uh, Quince and Mapes out there. Yeah, just be on the safe side. In case they got themselves into trouble, you better send somebody out to check on them. Right. Hey, really keep Miss Brewster around here. She's doing a heck of a job. Take a bigger man than you are. I just thought you'd want to know. I've made a decision. I'm not going to run anymore. I'm going to stay. Up to you. Doesn't it make any difference? To me? Why should it? You had a great deal to do with it. Look, Miss Booster, I don't know what you're driving at. I may have said a few things I shouldn't have, but uh, you said a few things yourself. They were true. All right, they were true. But um, whether you go back east or whether you stay here, uh, I don't care one way or another. I see. I'm sorry I bothered you. It's your shirt. I mended it. Uh, Miss Brewster, don't go getting yourself all mixed up again. She told me to be honest and meet people halfway. Yeah, the right people, the right things. Not some crazy notion you picked up because you were confused and scared. You got a good thing going on. Good life ahead of you with that soldier. Don't throw it away. No, I, I won't. Thank you for helping me. Anytime. I wish I could have returned the favor. Maybe you have. can't be this way all the time. Yeah, you seen Quince anywhere? Last hour or so, something wrong? I don't know, I can't find him. They don't think he took off. I don't know what to think. You keep an eye open for him. You find him, you send him to me. Right. Mushy! What do you think you're doing? Uh, picking up the lemon spoon, you scared it out of my hand, Mr. Wishbone. If I may be so bold as to ask, what were you doing with a ladle in the first place? For dishing out the new meal, Mr. Wishbone. For who? Ghosts? I don't see any live drovers around. Well, you will. I bet they're breaking their necks to get here right this minute. Well, they know you don't like latecomers. I know better than that. I don't even serve latecomers. That's what I said, Mr. Wishbone. I think. It was five of them didn't even show up for breakfast. What makes you think any of them are going to show up for noon meal? Well, we're all scared, Mr. Wishbone. I know, I know I am. Scared of me? Well, not scared like birds of a scarecrow, but we respect you. You. Hey, wish you seen Scarlet around anywhere? Well, you got eyes. You can see where he isn't. Go ask the boss. Now, how do you expect me to keep this warm if you keep putting it out in empty places like that? Get it back here and put it on fire. Some of those fellows are liable to be late. Afraid it's worse than we thought. How many men did you send after Garson and Collins? I sent three of them. I sent Scarlet, Dean, and Moore. Did they back yet? Nothing came back except Scarlet's horse a few minutes ago. Well, that's seven men. What could it be? That's by the time we found out. Get a hold of some of the men. Hold on, Favor. I'll tell you what happened to them. How do you know? Craddock's got them. We, uh, trying to take over the whole herd. All 3,000 hit. Say it plain. That can't be any plainer. We wanted your herd. It was set up from the beginning. The only reason I joined your outfit was to get you to the right place. And to uh, pick the right time for his men to take over. This is the right place in time? Well, except for one thing. I didn't pick it. I, uh, cut out on him last night. Walked out on the whole deal. So, um, 
He's uh, working this on his own. You expect us to swallow this? You better. You can kiss those beads goodbye. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to kiss you goodbye. You suit yourself, but I won't fetch a penny a pound at Abilene, and I'll be all you have left. What are we talking for? There's only one way to handle rustlers. Wait a minute. You cut out on credit. Didn't have to tell us. We'd never know. Look, it's a trick. His mouth's so big he can talk out of both sides at the same time. You don't want to believe me? You take a look at the facts. Now, Craddock's already picked off seven of your men. Maybe he's got a couple of more by now. How many guns does that leave you? How are you going to stand him off and guard that herd at the same time? Yeah. All right, if you let us know where his camp is, we can go hit him. No, that won't work, Favor. Not as long as he's got your men. He'll gun them down before you even get close. No, somebody's gonna have to get to them first, cover them. Somebody? Yeah, me. He's trying to talk his way out. Why you? Well, chances are I can talk him into believing that I've switched again. No, talking will be enough to convince him that you've switched again. You need some kind of proof. Proof? Yeah, like, uh... Me as a prisoner, for instance. Boss, have you gone loco? All right, Clay. How do you get the men guard the herd? We don't make it. Do what you can. Getting a bigger edge all the time. How far off is his camp? Up in the hills, but I wouldn't be surprised if his men were a lot closer. Probably watching us right now. Let me start acting like I'm your prisoner. Yeah. Which way? Up there. See that draw? Yeah. You got me stumped, Clay. Coming back like this, I just don't figure it. There's nothing hard about it. You know I like the edge, and when you start picking off Craddock's men, the odds change, that's all. They did, huh? We have got them, Angel. Nine of them, right back there. You uh, don't take any chances, do you? Not with anybody. Come on, take it easy. I brought him in, didn't I? Yeah, it was mighty simple, wasn't it? Well, all I had to do was play it innocent, like I wanted to spring his men. And then when I got him alone, there was no problem at all to take him. That's how it happened, Craddock. I saw him. Who are you? Well, how about it, Craddock? Did we start moving out? Only a dozen or so drovers left. 3,000 head of cattle, ours for the taking. Ours? You well, so then you think you can come back and pick up right where you left off, huh? Hey, you need me, Craddock. You'll never get that herd to Abilene without a good trail, boss. You know, with you along, I might never reach Abilene. You see, Clay, I like the edge, too. Too bad, because you haven't got it. You sneaked in and picked off Favor's men one at a time. I told you to play it my way, Craddock. Now, while you were and I are having this friendly little talk, some of uh, Favor's men came in and picked off all yours. Take a good look around, Craddock. The uh, ones holding the guns are Favor's men. The uh, ones they're hurting are yours. All right, that's enough. Ah, you pick up the draft real fast. Do I? How do you know Rowdy and Pete were going to show up? You look at it this way. The way you had faith in me, I had faith in your men. And thank you for everything, Mr. Faber. It's all you're going to do. I hope you and your soldier will be very happy. Well, I know we will. Now, let's see if we can get Mr. Forrester straightened up. He'd do well to stay here with us. Uh -huh. As soon as I get Miss Brewster back to the fort, I'll just mosey around and see what I can pick up. Couldn't do much better in here. Well, maybe not. But the uh, only trouble with here is there's no room at the top. You know me. Goodbye, Mr. Baker. Luck. So long. Say, when you were talking to Craddock last night, you almost had me believe in you. Almost. Still can't help wondering. I guess you'll never know that. See you around. Eat him up! Move him out!
I put a bullet in your belt, Buckle. That horse never bad enough. <laughs> Green, what does it? I don't know you, friend, but I venture to say that horse there has as much as you and I put together. If you kindly step aside, I don't want to risk injuring him while I pull this trigger. Step aside. I've seen men this skittish over a woman, never over a horse. All I was doing was looking. Yeah, it was the way you was looking. You know, in a way, I'm sorry for you, friend. Benson should have known better than to send one man to dispute my title. I don't know who you think I am, but you're making a mistake. Mistake's only gonna cost me one bullet. Plenty more where that come from. I'm a scout for trail herd looking for water. You and that stallion just happen to be here as far as I'm concerned. Uh -huh. You expect me to believe that? No. But you take a ride up to the top of that ridge and I'll show you something you can believe. Like what? Like 2,500 head of beeves. 2,500 head of beeves? Okay, friend. Let's have a look. Jed picked him up. I don't know. He's got a way about picking up strays. I better come check on it. Danny, this is Mr. Yates, trail boss. Danny Hawks. Mr. Yates? Danny has a proposition for you. Yeah, well, I'm listening. I understand you're short-handed. Uh, we're usually shy a man or two. Well, we're going the same way. You need a hand, I like company. Why don't you sign me on? You ever done any trail driving before? Well, I'm the best hand you'll ever see. Oh, that'll cover a lot of territory, I'll tell you. Cheap, too. Work for keep. Now, you see, there's one problem. Rowdy. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. Sign him on. Why? Well, you're short a hand. He's every bit as good as he says he is. How do you know? I know. My, uh, my instinct. Yeah, well, my instinct tells me no. Why? man riding a horse like that out here in the middle of nowhere wants to work for nothing. To me, that spells trouble. I don't need anything impeding the progress of this herd. If you say so. Of course, it makes me look like a... Well, it makes me look bad. Uh, how's that? As much as told him, he was signed on. What are you up to, anyway? 
Me? Mm -hmm, you. Well, you're short a hand, and I told him he was hired on. Of course, if you don't trust me... About as far as I can throw you. If you knew how that cuts. Yeah, I'll bet. Now what do I tell him? Uh, tell him he's hired. You hired him, I'll honor the commitment. Just make sure there's no trouble, understand? Don't worry. I'll tell him. Why don't you try water if the coffee bothers you? It's not the coffee, Wiz. I'm just trying to chase down a memory. Well, you're not going to find it in the coffee pot. Well, I'll find it somewhere. And soon. Well, don't go away mad. I'm due on God, Wiz. Well, don't get lost. It's a fine-looking animal you got here. Oh. Hey, mister, that's the beauty of the wild. You must set a pretty good store by him, the way you dress him down. Yeah, I do. Well, that figures. The more he shines, the more money he'll bring. There ain't enough money in the world to buy this horse. That's going a long way. I'd say he'd be worth 2000 2500 maybe. Would you take 3000 3500 Hey, mister, you making me an offer? Me? Where would I get that kind of money? But if you could get it, you would pay it. Would you take it? Hey, young fella. How about it? You want to sit in? Oh, I don't want to take your money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boys, you're not only looking at the best horse rider in the country, you're also looking at the best poker player. You're not far off, uncle. You know, I think we got ourselves a real shrinking violet here. And no offense intended, Uncle, but I used to gamble for a living. Uh -huh. Oh, you couldn't take out too much in this game, Danny. Strictly a two-bit limit. Yeah? In that case, I accept. Hey, you, uh... You want to watch my horse for me? Anything kill a little time before I get sleepy. Meaning we're just a bunch of nickel and dime cowboys that can't afford to lose? You said it, I didn't. Now, what's all this talk about a two-bit limit? The way I heard it, you won yourself $2,000 worth of horse flesh playing in poker. Yeah, I was a little different. The man I won that horse for almost half the state of Texas. Now I see why he was willing to work for nothing. <laughs> why don't you deal? Why don't you go ahead and join in? Not me. Mm. Chance to get that stallion. You think that's why I had you hire him on? Well, if that isn't the silliest, craziest hogwash I ever... It wouldn't work. Uh, why not? Well, he'd have my shirt before I had a hair off its tail. He's that good, huh? Look at him. You deal in seconds? Well, if he is, he's too fast for me to spot. What other brilliant little ideas do you have? Not a one. Someday I'll own that horse. I don't know how or where or when, but 
Someday he'll be mine. There is open with that close that. Senator Nat Benson owns a fair size of half of Texas. The other two are hide guns. Tough, fast, efficient. Well, if you know who they are, maybe you know what they want. Huh? Me? They want me. They're dead. You talk just like you play poker now. You overplay. I want to talk to you about him, Danny Hawks, and that stallion he rides. I want them both. Yeah, why? Stallion's my property. Danny will string up to the nearest tree we can find. Hmm. I, uh, doing this talk about stringing up, I don't see a star. No judge, no jury. Since when do you need a judge and jury to hang a horse thief? What do you know about this? Matt here gets his weights twisted around once in a while. What he meant to say was he tied tin horn on a gambling bet. I won that there stallion from him in a poker game, and I guess he feels now we weren't playing for keeps. He won the stallion, that part's true. But a couple of days after he took off with the horse, I found he cheated. It took you two days to find out he was cheating? That's right. Yeah, I'd like to play poker with you sometime, Benson. <laughs> I didn't think much about it until I took a close look at the deck we played with. The high cards were marked. Now, if that was true, it happened after we played. See, there are a couple things I've done in my life I really don't want to talk about, but horse stealing and cheating at cards ain't one of them. I say you did both. And you figure you'd get a conviction in court on that kind of evidence you got, Benson? I'm not arguing what a court would do about it. Uh, you want to go ahead and take them. It's yours. But just bring back a lawman and a warrant when you come, huh? Now, look here. Even if I could find a lawman, by the time I got him back here, Danny'd be a hundred miles away. Yeah, well, that's too bad. That's the only way you're going to take him out of here. Maybe you'll uh, change your mind after a while. Maybe. Bluff all bluff. Yeah, maybe. You know, that's the way he lives. That's the way he plays cards. The night I won this here stallion from him, all he had was a king high. What were you holding? Hey, I do, it. <laughs> you know, you did me a favor back there, not wasting a bullet on me, and now I'm going to do one for you. Oh, you... Yep. I'm going to take that stallion off your hands. You know, I'm off glad I didn't waste a bullet on you. I like you. A fella needs a fella like you around. Just to make life interesting. I think your life would be interesting enough. 
Knowing that somewhere up ahead, Benson must be waiting for you. He or one of his boys, they could be anywhere. Behind a tree, in that brush over there. Maybe just over the next rise. Maybe all three places, considering the two sharpshooters he's carrying with him. You know he's going to be somewhere. Taking dead aim on the man who's riding that stallion. Well, like I said, I owe you a favor, so... I might just be willing to take that stallion off your hand. Ah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am touched. You know, you make a fellow believe in problems. You don't think I'd put you in jeopardy knowing you was deliberately taking my place now, do you? Overheard! noise, so I yelled for him to stop. Sounded like Benson, and I wasn't about to stand there and let him shoot me. So you thought you'd start your own little private war, huh? Well, go ahead, start shooting. Both of you are close enough now, you might hit something. <laughs> the rest of you are no better off. You've been shying at everything all day long. And I don't have to remind you that we got a day's work to put in, the herd to move, do I? Pretty funny. Big joke. Supposing someone was hit. Nobody was. You figure you can take credit for that? I'm sorry. I guess it was wrong of me to think it was funny. You've been wrong about a lot of things here lately, Jed. Hey, now, wait a minute, Rowdy. You seem to be forgetting one thing, that this isn't over. Benson's still out there, and you can bet your bottom dollar he's got something up his sleeve. Danny says he's all bluff. Yeah? You were to call him, huh? With a herd that isn't yours and maybe a half dozen drovers' lives? to a man has just saved your life. What do you mean, saved my life? I call that plain bushwhacking, mister. Saved your life. You were going to fill that canteen, weren't you? So? Smell the water. Go on, smell it. Poison. That's right. Any man that poison a water hole ought to be strung up. You got no kick, Ramrod. I could have let you fill your canteen. You got a herd over here that needs water bad. They won't be able to drink, will they? Now, you tell that trail boss of yours that's the way they're all gonna be. Until I get Danny Hawks and that stallion. back to her and make sure they don't get too close. Right. Gates, I'm sorry I got you into this. Yeah. Looks like I got a little weight cut out for me tonight. Meaning what? Well, they probably spread themselves thin to surround the hide, stop me from going anywhere. No. 
so I go out and pick me off one or two of them in the dark. You do that, Hawks, and you can just keep right on riding. Don't come back to this outfit. What? They poisoned your water, didn't they? I'm running a herd to market. I'm not entering in any private wars, yours or anybody else, understand? I wonder about you, Yates. Most of the time, you seem to know what side your bread is buttered on. But you got a weak side that's gonna be your undoing. Most trail bosses would be happy to get me out there gunning after them Jaspers. Yeah, well, I ain't most trail bosses. Well, think about your remuda. You hide. I think about them all the time. What if that isn't enough for them? What if they start a whole big stampede? I can tell you this about Nat Benson. He won't stop at anything till he gets exactly what he wants. First you told me he was bluffing. Now you're saying he won't stop at anything till he gets what he wants. Now, there's something I'm beginning to regret. You mean the deal you made with me? Listen, Yates, I don't want you to feel obliged to me in any way at all. As far as the deal's concerned, you hiring me and everything was just a handshake proposition. Nothing on the paper. No witnesses. You got a legal right to ask me to move on anytime you want. We well, had a deal. Yes, sir. Oh, blind. Come on, say it. Say what? I got you into this. Well, the more time I spend talking about it, the less time I'll have to do something about it. What are you going to do? I'm going to ride ahead and meet him at the next water hole. Uh, we better get going. Not we, me. Well, there are three of them. Yeah, well, I'm planning to talk, not fight. And one man will have a lot of better chances by himself. And if they see just one man, they won't have to talk. You better take me along with you. I think you've done enough already. Well, maybe you're right. But you know something? I take one look at that stallion and I couldn't honestly say I wouldn't do the same thing over again. Well, you don't have to worry. You're not going to get the chance. Oh, just one thing more. If you're not back by nightfall, have I got your permission to worry about you? Yeah, you have. Talk to you, Benson. Get out there and see if there are more coming. Well, now, I don't think I got too much to say to a man who would protect a horse thief. Yeah, well, the only thing lower than a horse thief is a man who'd poison water. You said you wanted to talk. You ready to make a deal? Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Well, when do you turn him over? Who said anything about turning him over? Just possibly you better make yourself clear. Well, you said you were afraid he'd be gone when you came back with the law. Well, there's a little town of Prindeville up the road a ways. They got a sheriff and they got a judge. You ride up there and get them to swear out a warrant. When you come back, I'll have them here waiting. No. What's the matter? You afraid you might be wrong? This is not a case for the law. Just wondering if you have a case at all. <laughs> well, if I didn't, I got one now. Huh? You, trail boss for a horse thief. Now, that's quite a case. I think your people might just buy that. You know, my men will be after me. You think we're going to sit around here and wait for them? I got to find you first.
Well, as could be expected, without water. How long do you make it till sundown? An hour and a half, two. Why? Tainted blood. I may turn into a werewolf tonight. <laughs> Sounds like fun. You need any company? You howl for me. Hey, Colby! I know that man from somewhere. What man? All I can see is a horse. I'm looking for Yates. You're looking in the wrong place. You're still after my horse? Yep. Well, why don't you give it up? You know, I just decided that someday you're going to give him to me. Yates went all up ahead, didn't he? I live this long by one rule. Never ask the boss what he's doing. He's stupid. They're going to get him. What makes you so sure? Oh, now, don't kid me. You think so, too. Well, that's no skin off your nose. If they get him, they're going to offer to trade him for me. Well, you don't know Rowdy if you think he'd agree to that. I'm not worried about him. I'm worried about you. Well, worry. Why don't you go after him? I'm in curfew till after sundown. I'm not. You rest easy. I'll bring him back to you. What makes you think you can? What makes you think I can't? Ever occur to you, they might take you, too? They don't stand a chance. You know, when I was a young boy, I spent a few years with the Blackfoot tribe. They taught me a thing or two about reading signs. Hey, you're pretty good at Indian tactics, too, huh? You can ride two weeks in any direction, never find a man any better. You know, Danny boy, you keep patting yourself on the back that way, you're liable to work yourself up a handful of calluses and a hole in your back. All right, go ahead. And be careful of my horse. Remember me telling you that I knew Danny from somewhere before? Yeah. I saw a man once come as close to getting hung as a man could get, and with good reason. They got as far as a rope around his neck, and then he talked his way out of it. Slickest thing I ever saw. Danny? Danny. Yeah. Sun is still up. Yeah, so it is. I don't suppose Rowdy would ever know about Danny unless uh, we told him. Right. Come on. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't risk turning you loose while I'm alone. Yeah. That's a mistake sending those many years off. You live without supplies? Still a mistake. Think I can't handle one man unarmed and tied up? It's not me you're going to have to worry about, I think. Yeah, who then? You got just yourself to blame for the spot that you're in. You were warned. Tell me something. Did anybody stick a gun to your head to get in that poker game? What do you know about it? I know it was a fair game. <laughs> From 500 miles away, you know that. No, but I've watched Hawks play poker. He doesn't need to cheat. You don't know how bad he wanted that stadium. No, you must have wanted it pretty bad yourself to come after it the way you have. Something about that horse. Uh, you wouldn't understand. There's something else I don't understand. Feeling the way you do about that horse, uh, how come you staked it in the game in the first place? Well, there's a certain type of man can push you in a corner, twist things around, and uh, pretty soon you got to prove you're a better man no matter what it costs. Even the stallion, hmm? Yeah. I feel sorry for you, Benson. <laughs> Why? Because you'll never get that horse back. Oh, I wouldn't bet on that. Why not? Sounds like a pretty good bet to me. Trouble with you, Nat, is you're lousy gambler and too stupid to know it. Take his gun, Danny. That ain't no reason for that. Nat here's a talker. When it comes to action, he's yellow from head to toe, front to back. Only wears that hog leg for one reason. Scare people, it's scare real easy. Look, I said take his gun. Oh, here, let me untie your face. Watch out. It's quite a trap you just laid. Well, yeah. I can't imagine what you're talking about. <clears throat> you knew you were a lot faster than Benson. Listen, if I was half as fast, I'd be polished lightning compared to him. So what are you talking about, Yes, I saved your neck, didn't I? You've been looking for an excuse to get rid of him. That was that excuse. Now if he's dead, his gunman will probably take off and you'll be on your way, huh? No. He may have deserved to lose that stallion. That's still no excuse for cold murder. Hey, what do you think he's doing? I'm gonna take you to the nearest sheriff. We'll let him decide how much of this was self-defense and how much murder, huh? Hey, you know, I like you, Yates. You've been fair with me even when it costs you. You're not taking me in. Nobody's going to take me in. Careful, Rowdy. I wouldn't want you to scare my horse. You're going to try three of us, Danny? <laughs> I can't stand being cooped up, even for a while. Well, I can understand that. Hey, Colby, I got a little deal for you. This stallion for my freedom. Well, you like him, don't you? He's yours. Well, for a man with a clear-cut case of self-defense, you sound pretty desperate. I'm not worried at all about Benson. 
fact of the matter is, there are a couple items that might come to light once they get me in custody. I see. Well, is it a deal? I don't know. It's not up to me alone. Well, hey, what do you mean, your friend here, Yates? Well, you just take out that little old gun of yours, hold it on until we change horses, and I ride away. Just like that? Just like that. You know he wouldn't draw on you. I'm not so sure about that. Take a good long look at it. You're going to see that once in your lifetime. I know it. You never been on, have you? You never been as good as it looks. Better. I believe it. So what are you hanging on? Hey, you're a man with everything in the world gain, nothing to lose. That's one thing more I need. Huh? A little bit of your cold blood. Hey. Are you trying to tell me no? Yeah, and I don't suppose I'll ever forgive myself for it. Hey, Rowdy, you don't suppose... No, I guess not. Thirsty. I am thirsty. Well, there's some water just up the road a ways. Yeah, well, there's a little old stream right over there to the left. Take you three minutes to fill up your canteen. No. See that, Colby? You see it now, don't you? That's how far I trust you. It's got nothing to do with trust, hasn't it? You know, I... I think he's afraid to leave you alone with me. From where I'm sitting, that's just what it sounds like. Now, wait a minute. Don't be stupid. Come to think of it, I'm a little thirsty myself. Mule-eared, harebrained. And dry. All right. All right, Danny. Let's get down. Pleasure. How about that? Looks like he trusts you after all. Yeah, wouldn't you know? Hey, Colby. Ah. No, sir, I'm just as good with this here thing as I am with all things I do. You want to try me? No. Get away from that one. Just fine. Hey, beauty. doing that for? Have the stuff ready for the sheriff when he gets here. What about the stallion? Well, you made him a deal. Freedom for the stallion, huh? If you were going to take him up on the deal, then you earned it. If you weren't, well, Heard you back that direction.
more I get, the more you deserve it. How's he looking? Oh, fine. The thing is, I should have put salt in him instead of grease. What can I say? I think the less the better. Oh, just one thing more, Rowdy. When you came back without the water, was it because you didn't trust him or me? Here, you hold this. Let me fix that bandage. Never mind. I, I withdraw the question. Did something wish? It was worth it. Worth it? Well, like Danny said, a horse like that comes along once in a lifetime. And for a little while, he was mine.